My name is Mae Brussel. The title of this broadcast is World Watchers. It is program number 831, November the 9th, 1987. Uh, I'm going to spend the next three or four or five weeks, as much as I think is necessary to make inroads, into a multiple group of problems and questions that I've had on the air for many, many years, going back to the early 70s, but which are all coming to a head at this time, interestingly enough, and uh, people who have taken a back broadcast might have wondered what the connections were between a lot of material that I had on Son of Sam, the Manson family, the occult, Hitler's occult, the law enforcement, and so forth, and the Defense Department, and now the combination of forces of these very elements are coming together very loud and clear. Now, the greater part of the day from 12, actually 1 o'clock until 6, we were at the Mark Hopkins Hotel for a conference of psychologists and persons who have been sexually molested, who have been victim of satanic rites, whose uh, cases now, some of them are in a court, a matter up in San Francisco Bay Area that link to national, international problems, actually. And this conference was set up by Felix Polk, the parent, he and his wife, parent, parents of abused child, sexually abused child, and uh, several other psychologists and two people from the McMartin School from Los Angeles, talking about the satanic rites that the children go through in the nursery school, such as seeing other children cut up and the penis cut off and put in the mother's mouth, and the baby's uh, child is wrapped up and smashed, the bones are smashed, and then it's burned in front of these children. And there are video, not video, there are cassette tapes of this conference that uh, we attended. It was all day. The tapes, three tapes for the entire conference are $20.00. You can write to Conference Recording Service, 1308 Gilman Street, Berkeley, California, 94702. You can break it up into three different sections of the conference, $7 each, but it's terribly important to hear the whole thing if these subjects interest you, and maybe in the next few weeks and after this evening as I get into the material, the subject will very much begin to interest you. Two of the people attending this conference were parents, of sexually abused children that were involved in satanic rites, and I'll tell you who uh, was taking these children from the daycare center at the Presidio in San Francisco. And one of the parents, a father, is a nuclear physicist for the Army. Uh, they had the child at the Presidio daycare center, and the other is a dentist, Captain Mike Tobin, a graduate of West Point. And, of course, there were satanic rites and abuse of children at the nursery schools in West Point this past year, at the very military academy, and that was hushed up as much as it could be. Now it's the case is moving identical circumstances to San Francisco and the Presidio, and maybe there will be more attention there because San Francisco is more sophisticated in getting action, political activists, on these matters. Uh, the organization that these people have formed is called Enough. It's to alert people to the horror of violence against children, the failure of the criminal justice system to protect the children, and what interested me, there were young adults and teenagers that were sexually abused, but these are small children who, uh, in nursery school, and uh, very young, four to six to eight years old, and the organization feels that there is a mass movement entirely across the United States and in Germany and so forth of people abusing children, and the common denominator of all the people who had been abused or whose children had been abused, was that the law enforcement does nothing. The local police, the district attorney, the prosecution, there's nothing set up in courts for children's rights. And, of course, I went into the collusion of the uh, Justice Department, the police department with Son of Sam, and the Manson family, and the cases that I have studied, I have studied because the law enforcement did nothing. But now there are parents uh, who are establishment, can't be more establishment than military, nuclear physicist, and a dentist uh, doing surgical work for the Army up in San Francisco. And I'm going to tell you uh, in the weeks to come about some of that conference. They had a reading list. If you want to write to the organization for literature or help them, it's called Enough. The parents decided, and the psychologist and his wife, who decided to get this together and realize that their child had been sexually abused 
and that they were trusting the people at the nursery school who were in charge of him, they formed this organization called Enough, P.O. Box 712550 Shattuck Avenue, Berkeley, California, 94704. And if you write to them and get a reading list and become educated on this, and even on our Monterey Peninsula, I was shocked that the, Mon the San Francisco Chronicle that's delivered to my home didn't have the articles all last week that were in the San Francisco Chronicle on the newsstands. The first edition that comes out was uh, kept from the people who got it delivered at home. Now, they uh, spoke about ritual abuse indicators and uh, fear of children when they afraid their house will be burned or their parents will be killed and fear of blood. And they talk about drinking blood and they've been eating feces and drinking urine and fear of bathtubs or having their hair washed and afraid of needles because they're getting injections right at the Presidio Army School and then taken off the Army base to the head of a satanic organization, a man I'm going into, who works for the Defense Department and takes NATO, top NATO people who are members of his group through rituals of the Waffen SS. They warned about children writing numbers backwards, letters backward, uh, seeing satanic symbols, uh, that are being put upon them, inverted crosses, the number 666, they're writing it. They warned about preoccupation of death. These are little tiny children, Then the parents are finding these symptoms and warning about talking about animals being hurt or killed and descriptions of dismemberment of animals, which they are witnessing, and they going through the trauma of physical and sexual abuse, sexually transmitted diseases is a possibility, and they witness sadistic behavior, harming animals, harming other children. And some of these children, there is a fear that magic has been implanted into them. And they are fearful of bombs, monsters, ice, insects into them themselves. The children are afraid of those things. Now, this is very serious. I think you agree. And uh, I've, I've saved articles across the country on this matter. But there is an organization now called Enough. And as the literature comes out, I'll be sharing it with you. Now, to get into that subject, I just want to mention that a uh, attorney in New York City, Mario Marola, just died October the 31st, several weeks ago or 10 days ago. He was the attorney behind the Son of Sam investigation of David Berkowitz, who tried to say that David Berkowitz was the lone killer of these various people in New York when it turns out he's part of this satanic cult that goes from coast to coast, and I'll be doing a lot to update the David Berkowitz story uh, with you and describe parts of the book, The Ultimate Evil. Now, the attorney who prosecuted that also got Raymond Donovan off this Mr. Marola, witness to the Raymond Donovan trial, which was being investigated again very quietly. And, of course, there were three murders, primary witnesses during the time our Secretary of Labor was being investigated for mafia connections. So the attorney who knows about Son of Sam and Raymond Donovan was running for an elective office. He was up as a Democrat for re-election this uh, past week as a senior member of the New York City's five district attorneys. And he dropped dead of an apparent stroke. That's one of those diseases that goes around, apparent heart attack, apparent stroke. A witness to Donovan and Son of Sam, and those things aren't separately related, who uh, won the election uh, his name was on the ballot. He won it, but he was good and dead, age 65. Now, in studying the coups that have taken place in this country by the Defense Department and the intelligence community, I always dated the overthrow of Iran as the first what they called successful coup of the establishment, business establishment. And Bill Moyers had on his program last week, I'm sure all of you saw that it played several times, but some in the East don't get the National Public Radio and the story of the secret team that runs Washington and foreign affairs. He referred to Iran as the first coup. I have to go backwards now and say that the first coup of the United States took place, actually, in, uh, I refer to that time period, where in Bern, Switzerland, where Alan Dulles was working with SS Carl Wolf and Heinrich Himmler to take over the world after the war was over, working with the Nazis. And I think America's coup didn't happen in Dallas in 1963. It happened uh, in Bern, Switzerland. Looking up in re the research on Heinrich Himmler because of the connections to these events I'm going to share with you, 
uh, in the book uh, The Zodiac and the Swastika, How Astrology Guided Hitler's Germany, it's written by Wilhelm Wolf, who was the astrologer, one of them for Hitler. He tells the story how, of how working for Heinrich Himmler, he was close to him, that they planned the July 20th, 1944 assassination attempt on Adolf Hitler, at which time Heinrich Himmler would be head of the uh, Third Reich. Probably he would have been the one who escaped and left if he were the head of the country at that time. And this book says, after the unsuccessful, unsuccessful attempt on Hitler's life, as of July 20th, 1944, I was told by Dr. Govertz, who was in close contact with Gero von Governitz, an official on the staff of Alan Dulles's OSS services in Bern, Switzerland, that the Polish intelligence knew about Stauffenberg's plot to kill Hitler on July 10th, and they were asked to report on the reaction. What would the Poles do? What would the Ukrainians do? What would the movement do if there was a coup d'etat in Germany? So the staff of Alan Dulles in Bern, Switzerland, and with Heinrich Himmler, were working with the very people, Mr. Schellenberg and so forth, who were going to try but didn't succeed in killing Hitler, at which time Heinrich Himmler would have been the head of the uh, government. All of the while, he was head of the Gestapo, the Waffen-SS. In the same book, it, des it describes the late Baroque castle, which Heinrich Himmler used as a retreat. And this castle is part of the San Francisco Nazi Presidio occult story I'm going into. It says this castle, which is fabulously beautiful in a fabulously beautiful, beautiful part, once belonged to Prince Schwarzenberg. It lies at the foot of the Gaysburg. It has magnificent view of Salzburg Alps. Access is difficult, but Heinrich Himmler, a ruler, uh, right alongside of Adolf Hitler, a man of steel in original activities when he started. He was a poultry dealer, a manure salesman, interestingly. The world f first took note of him July 30th, 19, uh, June 30th, 1934, in connection with the Rome affair in which he had been obliged to order the execution of a group of people he called conspirators. conspirators. He has then since then been known in the anti-Nazi circles as the bloodhound, and Himmler comes into this story. Also, I uh, refer many times to two books that were the key surrender of the United States to the Waffen-SS. One, Operation Sunrise, The Secret Surrender, written by Bradley Smith, that came out in 1977, and one by Alice, Alan Dulles of the OSS, who was working with Himmler's agents, called The Secret Surrender. Also, the, the books, their title is very close. One, Operation Sunrise, dash, Secret Surrender. The other, The Secret Surrender, written by the man who was making the arrangements himself, Harper and Rowe, published it in 1966. Now, the articles that I'm going to be covering for the next few weeks in detail, I want to give you the list of them as they have come out and the reference I'm going to use because I will be using these articles and weaving them in and out with these books for the next three, four, five weeks. I call this part one of this story, and I think you'll see why. The bibliography for the ne next few weeks will be one, Hitler, the Occult Messiah by Gerald Suster, published by St. Martin's in 1981, Gods and Beasts, the Nazis and the Occult by Dusty Sklar, published in 1977, The Zodiac and the Swastika, How Astrology Guided Hitler's Germany, published by Coward McCann in 1973, Secrets of the SS, Glenn Infield wrote that. Stein and Day published it in 1982. The Ultimate Evil, an investigation into America's most dangerous satanic cults. The Son of Sam, the Manson Family, published by Dolphin. It just came out, 1987. And, of course, these subjects uh, and these books I have used throughout the years as very much a part of the uh, giving away or taking of America, whatever you want to call it, but I'm going to uh, refer to these books before I do others as references. Now, the major articles that came out this past week, and uh, I'm going to list them because people who get uh, uh, tapes of these broadcasts with other parts of the country are not getting these stories at all. It is identical to the Western Gold story and the links to the Los Angeles Police Department and, and the computers with a list of persons' names that were ordered destroyed. The material was ordered destroyed years ago when it was put into Western Goals. 
that is now in the control of Carl Spitz Channel and Admiral Thomas Moore and John Singlaub, the um, stories of Western Golds were in the L.A. Herald and in the uh, L.A. Times and never made the wire services, and I have about 100 important news stories. So this is what is going to happen to you people on the east or up north in Oregon or south in, in Texas or wherever you are in uh, Minneapolis and so forth. You're not going to get these unless you ask a library to send them to you. And I'm going to read the major articles that were one full page or of the newspaper practically just in the past few days. The first was Satanic Cult Leader Linked to the Presidio Daycare Center. Presidio is the Army uh, base up in San Francisco. This was San Francisco Examiner, October the 30th, written by B. Sito. And I'm putting the name of the author because many authors are in on this case. And as I say, San Francisco has a dose of this with the Manson family, the Zodiac Killer, the Zebra Killer, uh, all linked to the same network of the occult, of the military, of uh, the Defense Department. So maybe they'll get on this story. The next article is Molesting Rituals Reported, Presidio Child Abuse Case, San Francisco Chronicle, October 31st. Edward Lehmann and Bill Wallace. The next is Army Says Constitution Let Satanists Hold Top Secret Job. San Francisco Chronicle, November the 3rd, 1987. John Whittinger and Bill Wallace. Top Secret Job, you bet. He takes the NATO chiefs over to the castle of Heinrich Himmler. Wait till we get into that some more. The next major article is Presidio Satanist, A Scary Enigma to Observers. San Francisco Examiner, November the 2nd, 1987, Ivan Sharp. The next, Presidio Case Center, the first to face Army scrutiny. And maybe that's because those parents have had enough. San Jose Mercury, November the 4th, by Linda Goldston. The next, Satanism, linked to scores of U.S. child abuse cases. San Francisco Chronicle, November the 5th, Edward Lempinen. Next, Worldwide Probe of Army Centers. The Pentagon tackles the Presidio Molest case. November the 5th, 1987, San Francisco Chronicle by Dave Garrell. The next Bay Navy officer beaten to death, bludgeoned in kitchen on in the kitchen on his head. That was just uh, this week, November the 5th, 1987, and because one of these men whose child was abused, who is suing is a member of uh, uh, the nuclear uh, science over in the Bay Area, and this Bay officer was bludgeoned to death, and there are people over there protesting the uh, feasibility of Star Wars also. The next Army team probes child abuse charges, LA Times, and they gave this story, page 35, a small 12-inch report. Now, it was that way in reverse with Western Gulls. When LA carried that paper, the San Francisco paper didn't carry it. Of course, nothing in the Washington Post and this is military, national, international, and I will be sending copies of these tapes and uh, writing up charts and outlines for the Armed Services Committee. The next story, Army Team Probes Child Abuse Charges. Oh, that's the LA Times. The next, separate from the Bay Area, but very important, is the elite British regiments criticized for violence in the ranks. And this is that type of activity particularly taking place when they're initiated, taken over to Germany, New York Times, November the 4th, and then Satanist accused of molesting girl, soldier calls probe a witch hunt. That's a play on words. The Satanist is calling his investigation a witch hunt. San Jose Mercury, November the 11th, 1987, by Linda Goldstein. Now, those are the books and those are the articles that I'm going to be sharing with you regarding this matter. Now, the, the person involved, persons involved in this story, the cast of characters, the main two people are Michael Aquino and his wife Lilith, who came from a uh, sat satanic church in New York City, and uh, she lives, they have a home in San Francisco when he was stationed there, and I'm going into these articles because they're long and they're detailed, but I want to tell you where I'm leading to so you have some idea of what this story is. He's in the Army Reserve. He's a lieutenant colonel like Oliver North. He's currently assigned as staff officers for the U.S. Army Reserve Personnel Center in St. Louis, Missouri. This little three-and-a-half-year-old girl 
uh, was one of a group of children. There's about 10 out of 55, 55 abused children. And a gentleman on the Presidio named Gary Hambright is answering charges to only 10 of the children. That's the first collusion of the prosecution to not bring in 50. If out of 100 children, 50 were abused, sexually abused, and participated in satanic rites, the prosecution in on the Presidio, which is the military part of it, has decided to limit the case to Gary Hambright. But this little girl was at the uh, shopping center at the Presidio, and she recognized two people. And she told her parents, she's just three and a half then, she's four now, that that was Mickey, and the, the man was Mickey, and the woman was Shamby. And she grabbed her father by the legs and was very scared and suggested that they did terrible things to her and took her off the base. Mickey and Shamby were Michael and Lilith Aquino. She said she recognized them. And she gave them details of where they took her and put her in a bathtub uh, with uh, animal figurations on the corner of the tub and an all-black room and that she had been injected and taken off the Army base at the Presidio to Leavenworth Drive in San Francisco. And she described all four walls are black and the men were dressed as women. Those were their capes, the satanic witchcraft capes. And the woman was dressed as a man. So a search warrant was uh, given to go into the apartment and there were the black walls, all black walls, and there was a cross over the ceiling, which she described, and the bathtub that she said she was put in, and the clothing of these people, uh, the Michael and Lilith Aquino. And the matter stands right now that because she was taken from a military base to a home in San Francisco, that the San Francisco police have to prosecute but the man she was taken to is very high up in the United States military, and she was taken from a military base, and uh, the San Francisco police are not yet uh, charging him or her with anything, even though the child gave a 100% accurate description of what the place looked like, the ceiling, the walls, the tub, the clothing were there, the police picked up videotapes and records, uh, all kinds of material from their computer, and have decided to stay away. The prosecutor of the uh, Presidio sexual molestation against Gary Hambrett has said, and I'll put his name and their names on the air in the weeks to come so you get to know them, uh, at least to remember them if you want to uh, play this back, and maybe they'll get great appointments by Ronald Reagan's uh, successor someday. But anyway, sh these the people involved that she described are not yet wanted by the San Francisco police, this is identical to Son of Sam Manson family and all the other horror stories that I have studied through the years. Uh, Michael Aquino, the person that she recognized as Mickey, was a former stockbroker for Merrill Lynch. There was a massacre of eight people in Philadelphia recently uh, where this man came out of a bunker-type home, and he was a former stockbroker for Merrill Lynch. Now, Merrill Lynch was named in Judge Kaufman's crime report as depositing money from organized crime that came from Italy, from the P2, the Pizza Connections. Donald Reagan was chairman of Merrill Lynch. He became Chief Secretary of the Treasury under Reagan and Chief of Staff of the White House. Uh, Michael Aquino, for a while, worked at Merrill Lynch. He was a former student just recently at the National Defense University at Fort McNear in Washington, D.C. He holds two advanced degrees in political and science. He's interested in political science from the University of California, doctor's degree, and one from George Washington University in Washington, D.C. And he also taught a professor of political science at Golden Gate University in San Francisco. He holds the top secret security clearance for the United States. He's highly decorated as a lieutenant colonel, served in the Green Berets in Vietnam, still holds the top security clearance, even though this situation is taking place out in San Francisco. His expertise in Vietnam War was psychological war warfare. Expert in PSYOPs, those are the capital letters P-S-Y-O-P-S, -S, psychological operations. That was his expertise, political science and psychological operations. And for the weeks to come, I'm going to read you sections of his book, and I'm going to try and get his books, but his description of the necessity to mass produce and brainwash all people inside the United States. Uh, never mind enemy overseas. There's nothing about enemy 
it's about us. He served as a liaison officer to the NATO countries, and NATO was very much part of Lysio Jelly's P2. Jelly was involved with uh, the uh, Bologna bombing, with Francesco Pazienza, with mass murders, with setting up the uh, death squads in Argentina, in Bolivia, worked with the CIA. Jelly was at Reagan's inauguration. Alexander Haig was part of NATO and worked closely with Ladine and visited Ladine and Pazienza just three weeks before Reagan was inaugurated. This person was a liaison officer to the NATO countries. He is a consulting faculty member of the U.S. Army Command and General Staff College. And just uh, hold this up and uh, visualize this man getting children whose parents are working who leave them at a military day school and they're injected and taken to this man's apartment where the rituals begin. He believes and writes about the coming apocalypse, that there will be an annihilation. Practically most everyone will die except for a very few elect. And he's advising the NATO and he works with psychological operations, top secret uh, security clearances, and is ready for the with the military. And he's in the military with the reserves right now, believes that this great Armageddon is going to come and that there will be annihilation of a lot of people. He's the leader of the Temple of the Set, the Satanic Church, headquartered in San Francisco. He worked with Anton LaVey until 1975. LaVey makes the connections, and when he was working with him through those years, to Roman Polanski, to the Sharon Tate murder, to, Sh to the Manson family, to David Berkowitz, to a murder at Stanford campus of the Peroff girl the year before to the Perloff girl, and I'll go into their murders. I had that matter, those matters on the air in 1977-78 on my programs on World Watchers, and Anton LaVey was the advisor for uh, Roman Polanski's movie when he made the uh, Rosemary's Baby. And then the same people worked with Manson who killed Sharon Tate and the, her pregnant, she was pregnant with a baby, and five other people, and then the next night killed the La Biancas and made a grand score of eight people while they wrote Helter Skelter to make it look like the Beatles were associated with the violence. And if that wasn't enough, they uh, left the credit cards of Biancas and others in the black part of town to make it look like black people did these murders. I've done years of broadcasting, but I'm going to update it now for new listeners and people who uh, weren't listening to World Watchers back in those days and show how those materials are coming together now. Enough is enough, and it was important enough for Barbara Honiger and I to go up there and be riveted just listening to what happened yesterday. And as I say, I'll get those tapes and share them with you. And people in the audience in front of us, behind us, were crying. The analysts were talking, and it, the memories of how these people were abused and mutilated and so forth, and the discussion of these children and the... The very scary part, and I have to tell you, I read in the newspaper, I'll finish the list of some of the subjects that this Aquino was involved in, and then tell you about Dr. Polk, who headed the conference, and how he completely shocked me with his indifference on a particular matter. But just to get down the list now, in the second half of World Watchers, uh, program number 831, Mr. Aquino has conducted occult rituals, Pattern on ceremonies conducted by Nazi leader Heinrich Himmler, the man who was to succeed Hitler and whose arrangement for his Waffen-SS were put into the Ardennes offensive, the Battle of the Bulge. I said the purpose was to have the Waffen-SS meet the American army where they were secure after the war. He conducts rituals, or they talk about one, we don't know how many, on ceremonies uh, similar to the Nazi leader Heinrich Himmler. In Himmler's Germany, he goes to the castle, once used by the Nazi SS for black magic ceremonies during the Third Reich, and Aquino performed the rituals, he said, to recreate an order of knighthood for the followers of Satan. That's what this is about as we get into this great Armageddon, the knighthood for the followers of Satan. It's not communism or anti-communism, it's that Satan is going to win and we uh, are part of this operation. Aquino encourages followers to study the beliefs of the Nazi terrorist group, and that's where Lysio Jelly and uh, Michael Ledeen and Alexander Haig and 
The Super Seize Me, the Italian intelligence group, were linked directly to the United States intelligence in these same kind of terrorist activities. He told his followers to study the beliefs of Nazi terrorist groups, particularly the early formation of the VEM, V-E-H-M, and the Thule Society, the Cooley Gesellschaft, and the Arn, I don't know if I'm pronouncing this right, the Arnenerbe, A-H-N-E-N-E-R-B-E, that were two fanatical right-wing groups described in the newspapers that I listed for you. The, they are Aryan groups that existed before and during Hitler's reign. They started before, and they were linked to the Thule Society and the Knighthood that is very much alive in Washington and in San Francisco with little kitties and all around the country at military bases. Now, a quite a book list that he has for reading uh, for his church of set, he's the high priest, includes Mein Kampf, Hitler, the occult messiah, the occult roots of Nazism. Uh, children from the Presidio Daycare Center, as I say, were taken. This one little girl is the only one. Uh, if the prosecutor has asked the others, I don't know. There's 10 uh, people that uh, the daycare center caretaker, Gary Hambert, is charged with sexually molesting. I don't know how many went to the home. It could have been the 50 that were molested, but they're talking about one. You know, with the Kennedy assassination, there was one man. It was Oswald with World War II. It was one man, Adolf Hitler. Uh, there's always one person with Watergate. There was one man, uh, Richard Nixon. These very complex plots are reduced to one. Now, the as I say, the San Francisco police raided the apartment of Aquino and his wife and found exactly what the children were describing. And he is still in St. Louis. He has his top security clearance. He worked for the Defense Intelligence Agency, which was the agency set up by da Daniel Graham, was the chief of the Defense Intelligence Agency, and he worked there in 1981. And I have to look up, uh, I did, forgot to do it when I came in today, the years that Daniel Graham was head of the DIA, because Daniel Graham shares offices with the Fritz Kramer. Hitler's general was in the Waffen-SS. Otto von Bolschwing was up in Palo Alto with eight years behind him and a secretary translator working for Ronald Reagan of the Waffen-SS, and he was put in the OSS. And uh, Fritz Kramer was uh, Hitler's Fritz Kramer, number prisoner number 33, and there's a lot of witchcraft, and number 666 comes through. They're asking the children if they've seen these numbers. That Fritz Kramer uh, from the Waffen-SS uh, has taken a disappearance since World War II. And I believe it's entirely possible and almost impossible that it wasn't the man who shares offices with Daniel Graham. I've said these things are important for many, many years. And I think the it's very hard for the listener to comprehend the breadth. is not your fault. It's a hard subject. But the breadth is so wide. And it was very good timing, synchronicity, to see this play about the Weimar Republic and how incapable individual writers, producers, actors, otherwise successful people couldn't deal with Germany in 1932-33. It took Hitler to decide what to do with them because their concerns were such as a knife scratching the table or the psychiatrist leaving Berlin without telling his patient she left, and she's hysterical. In the day-to-day -day things in that play were the important things, not what was really happening. Uh, the theme of that play, incidentally, was it's called A Room Called Day, and it's about a very cheerful apartment that this woman loves in 1932. She's very happy with the apartment, but the warning of the person who's sort of a moderator, a young person who's speaking in front to the audience from time to time, a bright room called Day it is. She warns it that when it's dark and you have nightmares, face your nightmares, face your worst fears, because that is the reality that is around you. When the rats come out at night and everything is quiet and dark and you think about the horrors in your subconscious and in your conscious and you relegate them, I had a bad dream last night, the playwright is saying, write down your dream and deal with it. It is real. Your dream is your reality. And your day world, that bright day where it's so cheerful and pretty, this girl just, the woman just loves her apartment. It's so bright and clear. 
that it's a beautiful apartment and she's so lucky to have it. But it's at nighttime that all the things start happening and people appear uh, uh, so distressed and the devil enters into there and the Reichstag fire takes place and the author is saying, uh, don't be cheerful all day and sleep at night because if you don't face your fears, as I say, your fears are your reality. Now, to get into the specifics of these articles, as I say, this man worked for the Defense Intelligence Agency, and Daniel Graham, as former director, of course, has to be very close to the DIA, and also Peregrine and General Singlaub and Robert Brown are close to the organization that was tied into Mr. Meadows and the officers of the DIA. And I'll do some more details on Mr. Michael Aquino and what's going on around this country at the daycare centers and how high up in the military it goes, where members of the Joint Chiefs of Staff belong to the Church of Set. They partake of the satanic rituals that he is a part of. He keeps in his apartment a dagger that came from Himmler's Waffen-SS and shows it to people and worships the Nazis, keeps the top security clearance. Now the argument, uh, that no argument, but in the newspapers they say, there are members of Satan cults or witchcraft that can be in the military. It doesn't interfere with, interfere with their military functions. But when they take a child off of a base and take her to their home and uh, take off her clothes and she's naked and inject her with something on the way or as soon as she leaves one place and maybe she can't remember everything that was done. They took videos and films and so forth. When she takes a child from a care center where the mother and father have left her off, that is the crime, and by that, he should be out of the Army as quick as possible. He can do all of his hunky-dunky, but when it links to the crimes or the Manson crimes and uh, whatever they are involved in, when it is criminal, and I think that Heinrich Kimmler and the Waffen-SS is criminal because he intends that a large number will die and only a select few will live, and that's what his literature is about, so he's planning mass murder and I've been told by people, well, in the civil liberties protected the Nazis, you have to have freedom of speech. Well, if you have freedom of speech, why can't you go in a theater and sometimes just yell fire and see how funny people drop their popcorn or spill their drink? And I can't go to the airport and yell, there's a hijacker, a hijacker. They would give me a fine, arrest me, and I can't stand in front of your house and say, I want to kill you. Uh, you cannot do that. You can't stand in front of a black person's house and say you're going to be killed and dead or a Jew and or anybody else and say we plan to kill you. There are people that went to prison for planning to kill people like Edwin Wilson was going to kill his prosecutor and he got the charge and they socked it to him for extra years in jail. And Sandra Good of the Manson family uh, went to jail because she was planning to kill people and sending death threats. And she's actually, the letter I got from her was the only death threat I ever got in 16 years on the radio, came from Sandra Good. But if the philosophy that you belong to is a philosophy, where, philosophy whereby you have to die, then the freedom of speech is over because the intent is to organize, organize enough people to kill the people they don't want around. And I'll never win points with uh, persons who have another view of that, but the Waffen-SS is the death head. It's called the death head. That's what it is. And this knighthood is to kill and to train to kill. And this man, as now, uh, as if it wasn't reason to bring him in before, has now taken uh, at least one child to his place because you can't take away her absolute description when they got a search warrant to w go in there if it was a house with uh, powder blue walls or yellow walls and no cross on the ceiling and no capes and so forth. But she said exactly what it was, and she recognized them at the supermarket, and she was scared. And she said, Mommy, that's Mickey. And Mickey was Michael Aquino, advisor to the Joint Chiefs of Staff. And Shambi was his wife, Lilith. And uh, she, she knew them immediately, and the home was exactly as she described. Now, going back to um, early World Watchers and programs I did, and I mean... This is early. I was on the air in 1971, starting May of 1971, and I didn't start making tapes available to the broadcast until 1977, March 77. 
But as starting in June 1977, just to read some of the subjects I had on the air that pertain to these cases, uh, one in June 6, 77, uh, program number 272 is hypnosis, mind erasing of the CIA, victims of the CIA, another broadcast the following week about Dr. Edward Simpson Callis, who passed away this year, and his exposés of mind control and how the prison system doesn't let a selected patsy be deprogrammed, such as Sirhan Sirhan. So the killers go free, but uh, a selected patsy has to stay in that mental state. I was talking about the neutron bomb in 1977, and then starting August the 15th, uh, Part 1, Son of Sam, David Berkowitz, the CIA zombie test, and the mind control of David Berkowitz. Now, the ultimate evil just came out, but I was uh, working on these things out here and shared them on the air, broadcast 282. 283 was Son of Sam, the capture of Son of Sam, the police connections to him, and the CIA connections to the New York Police Department. Again, in October 77, the CIA mind control, the purpose, the goals, how it applies to political assassinations, and some more of Son of Sam in 1977. And then I was talking about the links of John Wheat Carr, the real son of Sam, who was murdered on a U.S. Army base in South Dakota, that he was the son of Sam Carr, and that this was a military uh, condition. He was murdered, and again, it tied into the ritualistic murders. Oh, getting back to Dr. Polk, one minute, because this son of Sam and John Wheat Carr comes to mind. He was the gentleman who planned the meeting yesterday and is head of the organization called Enough. And uh, after seeing in the newspaper all these things about Heinrich Himmler and the sexual assaults upon these uh, young people, I called him in Berkeley. The, uh, his name was in the San Francisco Chronicle telling about this conference. And I said, I'd like to attend. And I say, Barbara Honiger went up with me. And we, we really wanted to hear what this situation was. And Dr. Polk was the first speaker to talk about his son, and his wife talked about their son's abuse, just this little fellow, and the things that, that he's been able to say happened to him. And he's very tiny, but he's able to say that much. Dr. Polk began by saying that he was nine years old when the war was over, that he lived in a concentration camp, that his mother and father lived in a concentration camp and had come to this country where he's a psychologist, at Berkeley, at the in Berkeley, California, not associated with the university, but in private practice. And then he proceeded to monitor or be the host to all the various speakers and didn't once mention the newspaper articles relating to Heinrich Himmler, the Joint Chief of Staff. I thought it would be a political awareness of fascism with a capital F, fascism. But the very people that came from Germany weren't able to see the parallels, didn't want to talk about it, and I took a bare minimum of material to them, thinking that if they have an interest, they can call me. Uh, we'll see what happens. But when I showed his wife before the meeting, we went up early, that on 1978, I was talking about John Wheat Carr, who was the real son of Sam, uh, that was helping with the murders and was linked to satanic cults. She said, well, how did you get that? It's just in the new book by Mr. Terry, The Ultimate Evil. I said, well, I have it at home in my files. Well, where did you get it? How did you know this? She says, you know, we could be infiltrated. And she thought, Aaron first the feeling is that we were the enemy infiltrating the meeting because I knew something that was out in 1978, by March 78, that is only coming out in a book in 1987. You can say you heard most of it always on World Watchers years ahead of its time. She didn't believe how I would get it. I said, well, I would like you and your husband to come down, thinking that they'd be interested in the links of Himmler to the OSS, to Alan Dulles, to the Manson operations, and to Son of Sam, and Palo Alto murders, and San Francisco murders, and witchcraft. But she just looked dazed, like, I want to be the head of this, or I want that Andy Warhol, 15 minutes of fame, but don't tell me facts that confuse me. So whether or not we hear from them remains to be seen. I took some very other valuable material about Nazis in the San Francisco police departments. I really don't know if they comprehended what I understood. But I showed her that about John Wheat Carr and uh, did a broadcast in 1978, number 307. And we're up to 831 tonight. 
on Tex Watson, the Manson family, their Christian indoctrination, and some more on John Wheat Carr, how he was murdered at the Army base, and so forth. I was talking about these things a long time ago, and I have a list of past broadcasts. It goes on and on, and I have the research. Uh, a article just came out recently describing the new book, The Ultimate Evil. Ten years later, the son of Sam Dapps persist. New book claims the cult was behind the slayings. And this Maury Terry, who wrote The Ultimate Evil, I have his phone number. I was in touch with him back in those days, nine years ago. And a researcher in New York uh, sent me a lot of material that was pouring out of the New York newspapers. And um, uh, he just didn't understand what I was saying then. He understands it now. And he's making links of the cult of the Manson family and the North Dakota murders and the California church murders and the Long Island case of Roy Raiden. I did a lot about Roy Raiden, or quite a bit. He was murdered in California. He was associated with the New York Police Department with Henry Kissinger, and uh, he beat up a girl who was left to die on the subway. She survived. He was murdered in California about a year and a half ago. So the ultimate evil that I'll be sharing with you, and you'll all be able to get it, and I'm sure it'll be in paperback soon, is about these cases. Uh, Star newspaper that uh, sheet that's out at the liquor stores and on the newsstands every week, June 16th, has a long item about this book with David Berkowitz. It says uh, in large black letters, 10 years ago, New York son of Sam killer, David Berkowitz was caught and the case was stamped solved. But was it? Terrifying new evidence now shows that the son of Sam may not have been alone insane murder, but a member of the nationwide satanic cult that still kills and gets away with it. You better believe they do. And goodness knows what they're doing to these little children who subliminally may be told later as adolescents to get into this knighthood of this killing. Children of the military will never know what was in their minds. In the book, The Control of Candy Jones, she told how she was injected in California had to go all the way from New York City to California to be injected where the psychologist uh, would tell her to hate Jews, to hate blacks, hate color, the colored people, and Italians, because they all smelled. And this very nice young lady who was a model who had no antagonisms towards these people was given sodium pentothal by the Central Intelligence Agency and the Defense Department and told who to hate in the years to come. So the description of the book says the cults kill and get away with it. but And not only do they kill... But the people from McMartin were telling about the ritual cutting. Uh, they cut goats and cut their heads off and show the children. They mutilate the animals in front of them, and they kill real people. And I'll get the tape and put it on for you. You're pretty sophisticated to hear how they have breeders, women who are called breeders from this group. Uh, that's a new name they had in Nazi Germany, but that was to make for the Reich to continue the strength of the Reich. The breeders of these cults, and these people know about this and, and had descriptions of these cases in California and around the country, are women who have babies so the babies can be cut up. And at one ritual, this person described, and imagine a whole afternoon of this, of after the baby is born and is just an infant, not too old, how they mutilate it, cut off the penis, put it in the mother's mouth, and cut the baby up to little pieces, and want the mother to burn it, it's wrapped up, and she doesn't, so they do. That's a breeder for a sacrifice happening on army bases, everywhere in this, a lot of places in this country and overseas. But I stress army because they're supposed to defend the United States, and this particular case brings out a man who's an advisor to the Joint Chiefs of Staff, to the War College, who works with the Reserve, who had an honorary a teaching uh, experience in Washington, D.C., defense-related, who has two Ph.D.s, a student of political science, an author of books on satanic witchcraft, taught at uh, Golden Gate College, and is very influential, both academic, military, working with NATO, and having rituals in the uh, castle, the exact castle where Heinrich Himmler had the rituals to teach his members, including Joint Chief of Staff of the United States, into those rituals. And the children at the Martin School saw other children killed and put into paper bags, and then they took hammers and smashed the bones. Can you imagine the sound and what these children went through? 
and most of the defendants were dropped, and they kept it with Mrs. McMartin, who's like 70 years old in a wheelchair, and they were had to sit and suck her breasts. This is what we heard yesterday. It was horrendous, and it was it was the real world. It wasn't our dreams. It was our real world, and I'm glad I was there with Barbara to share it because she understood it and to see and hear these people talk about these experiences. Now, the book, The Ultimate Evil, uh, I'll be going into uh, a lot of that with you. The man who was charged with those crimes was David Berkowitz, a postal worker. One of the things he described was that they had to give information of every member of their family because then if they told parts of the story, their families would be killed. He said, uh, why would he keep silent now? He said, upon joining the cult, and Berkowitz was adopted, born Jew, who in Vietnam, all these people have had this experience in the Vietnam War, and this uh, this Aquino, uh, Michael Aquino, was in the Dominican Republic, Vietnam, and South Korea. Okay. It said that David Berkowitz, upon joining it other new, with other new members, had to supply photos and maps and addresses of his relatives. And they were told that if he left the cult and implicated other members, their families would be killed. Berkowitz has repeatedly admitted he fears for the life of his relatives. Now, do you remember at the heat of the Iran-Contra story how Betsy North leaves her home in Virginia to go to Philadelphia to the offices of Willard Zucker, the man who used to work for the Internal Revenue, who is the banker in Switzerland, who heads Lake Resources, and I'm going to do a lot more on Lake Resources and uh, possible massacres, that Calaveras County massacre that took place where about 46 people were killed in Calaveras County, and only Mr. Charles Eng is sitting in a Toronto jail, and the police have covered up that entire uh, bunker operation that co- could possibly link to the Iran-Contra people. And so the remember when Betsy North went to uh, Philadelphia and Mr. Zucker said the purpose was to send money to a grandmother, a grandfather, a sister, a brother. Tell me who all your relatives are. Well, if these people are linked, if Ali North knew this man in Vietnam, if this mind control session had anything to do with Ali North and it connects to Anton LaVey, and to the uh, witchcraft in San Francisco that is connected to these other operations, was she turning over all those names so that if either one of them talked, they would be wiped out? Is that why she went to Philadelphia? She didn't have to go see Willard Zucker leave home at at the expense of probably involving her husband in uh, look like a payoff or whatever. She had no reason ever to see this man at all or to turn over the names of any relatives at all and children's ages and so forth, and because of the overlay of these people with the satanic operations and the war college, NATO, the Joint Chiefs, uh, was this what she was doing in Philadelphia? A very important matter to consider. Now, I will start, uh, my time is almost up, so I will start next week and interject some of the articles in chronological order for you, starting October the 30th, with the San Francisco Examiner, Satanic Sect Leader Linked to the Daycare Pro. And this is about the San Francisco police investigating the Army Reserve officer who heads the Satanic uh, cult, and that uh, how the police raided the home, found all the things the child described. They took 36 videotapes, photographic negatives, photo albums, cassette tapes, photos of costumes, masks, and stars in connection with the investigation, of sexual molestation and child pornography. Uh, this article, this particular article that uh, I outlined from the San Francisco Examiner said the search stem, stems from a complaint of parents whose child attended the Presidio. Between September and October 1986, she was molested by a Mr. Gary and was taken to the Leavenworth house where she was filmed. Another man filmed her bathing in a tub. Right now, Michael Aquino is in St. Louis, Missouri. The search took place in San Francisco, and uh, it goes on to say that Glenn Pamphiloff, P-A-M-L-I-L-O-F-F, Glenn Pamphiloff, juvenile division inspector for the Presidio, wrote Michael Aquino on August 28th and said he could not see how a satanic sect could be involved 
since it has worked very, he has worked very hard to be a decent, constructive, and responsible. This church has been a responsible organization. This is the one with the daggers of the Waffen SS, and the prosecutor on the Presidio Army base says, you are a very nice guy, and uh, he sends a sympathetic letter that you are sincere, you're decent, you're constructive, you're responsible, you're one hell of a guy. So next week, I'll go on with the prosecutor of the case, the FBI, and the Mr. Robinson doing absolutely nothing about the case. Nothing at all. And if that isn't scary, that is your real world. That is not the world of dreams. This is the world of Ollie North, the War College, the Defense Department of NATO. NATO exercises, it was during the 1982 exercises that Mr. Aquino was doing the rituals in the castle of Heinrich Himmler and illustrating to his people these necessary uh, ceremonies for their knighthood. And members of the Joint Chiefs of Staff are members of the Temple of Set. And again, this is Mae Brussel. The title of this one-hour broadcast is World Watchers, number 832, November 16th, 1987. Now, last week... I did part one on the nursery school in San Francisco where children were taken to the home of a man who's the head of a satanic church. Today, as of today, November 16th, the Army has closed by, by this next Friday the U.S. child care facility that I talked about. They moved in very quickly and said that as many as 60 younger youngsters were sexually abused, abused, but one man, Gary Willard Hambright, 34, a former worker at the center, has been charged with abusing only 10 boys and girls. With uh, Actually, there are 60 or more, and about 50 of them have venereal disease, uh, but they're infants. So being as they're too young to testify, the man won't have to account for how these infants and children got venereal disease. But this gentleman, if you can call him that, who took these children, allowed them to be taken off the premise, happens to be a former Southern Baptist minister. And I think that it is scary to uh, trust your church. And I cited before some material we learned in San Francisco that the churches are actually being used for these rituals. Almost 100 children were examined for physical or psychological signs of sexual abuse. As of this next Friday, the nursery school will be closed, but the problems won't be solved because so far the San Francisco police and the investigators are not touching Mr. Maurice Aquino, whose name came up and is very uh, prominent in this particular case. Before I get on to him, I just want to share with you an article that was in the New York Times December the 20th, 1986. Sex case accuser is discovered dead. The mother whose questions led to the preschool investigation of the McMartin Preschool in Los Angeles was found dead in her home the week that this was written on uh, December the 20th. Judy Johnson, 42 years old, uh, her mental stability was questioned at the pretrial hearings, she was found in, in home in a fluent seaside community of Manhattan Beach in California. She was expected to testify. At the time of her death, she was living alone, and people were concerned. They didn't see her coming and going out of the house and broke into the house, and the body was discovered. At the time she was dead, Raymond Buckley was asking to be released from jail. And Mr. Bucky uh, was relying on the past testimony of children in the case that this particular defendant said were threatened that they would be killed or their parents would be killed if they discussed the molestation case. Well, this woman had a child in the nursery school and she was killed. So imagine the effect it would have on the children who were told that they would be killed if they discussed this particular case. And, in fact, when you get one mother dead and that mother was the one who insisted on the story being told, it gets even more scary. She wanted to testify, and she was the one who went to the Manhattan Beach Police in 1983. She alleged there was sexual molestation of her own son, two and a half years old, and it was her charges that led to the uh, arrest of the Bucky family and five other people connected with the school. 
and uh, Mr. Bucky's mother, uh, Virginia McMartin, and their daughter, Peggy and Bucky. And after this lady was killed, the charges were dropped against several people in the school. Judge Pounders ordered the current hearings after the defense in a motion to dismiss the case. They asserted the evidence about Mrs. Johnson, the murdered person, who became a prosecution witness in the preliminary hearing, was deliberately withheld from the defense by prosecutors. The defense wanted it thrown out, but this was, the case was proceeding, and the New York Times said much of this came to light about the case when Glenn Stevens, a former prosecutor, and this is the really scary part of it, a former prosecutor in the case gave screenwriters Abby and Myra Mann information about Mrs. Johnson. Mrs. Johnson is the woman that forced the police to open the case. Now, I never trusted Abby Mann, the film director. He did a horrible movie on the Atlanta child killings, and he's making a movie, and the people are going to him, screenwriters, and telling him about a prosecution witness. The Manns are writing a book and a movie about the case with Mr. Stevens, formerly prosecutor, who turned the information about Mrs. Johnson over to them. That This prompted a, news, a new hearing in the testimony, and Mrs. Johnson's mental case then came into question. Is she mentally sound as they proceed to write a book? And she opened the whole story up. Now, at the conference in San Francisco uh, two weeks ago, or a week ago Sunday, there were people from the McMartin Nursery School who told terrible stories about this school. So Mrs. Johnson, the lady that went to the police, uh, her name was turned over to the movie makers, the writers, the same writers that have fouled up the Atlanta story and a lot of other documentary movies. And is this the route you take that so-called writers are under the cover of writers get this information, and then the primary witness is found dead. Now, Newsweek had a story about Mike uh, Aquino, the gentleman I referred to last week. They moved much quicker than a lot of news stories do. Usually, the story that broke in the San Francisco Examiner and Chronicle about him, it would take two or three years sometimes to get through the major media. But there's a picture of Aquino and his wife in Newsweek, November 16, 1987, it's titled The Second Beast of Revelation, Claims of Satanism and Child Molesting. And I want to share this with you to show you the part that Newsweek leaves out and some that they leave in. It's important. Lieutenant Colonel Michael Aquino, U.S. Army Reserve, has a face that might scare little children. I have sharply pointed eyebrows and a strong widow's peak, and I suppose I look pretty demonic, as the, he said, as the leader of the satanic church called the Temple of Set. The second beast of Revelation frightened some adults. And although he is interested in Nazi pagan rituals, which leaders of the Waffen SS practiced during World War II, he insists he does not use little boys of girls in his worship. Now, this Newsweek article doesn't tell that he takes members of the Joint Chiefs of Staff to Heinrich Himmler's castle. And indeed, a little child doesn't have to hear about Heinrich Himmler's uh, dagger or the Waffen SS to be scared about being taken from a school into a home in San Francisco with all black walls and being put into a bed or a bathtub with dogs on it and uh, crosses on the ceiling and seeing men get into capes and dresses and so forth. Uh, what's scary isn't the uh, Nazi rituals, but the fact that the children are taken there and he says he's interested in the Nazi pagan rituals but it, they don't tell you about how many military people are there or his expertise in mind control of what these children will remember later. He insists he doesn't use little boys or girls in his worship, and it's sheer coincidence that connected him to this bizarre allegation of molestation at the Presidio. He calls it a sheer coincidence, even though he was recognized by a child who described his home and the rooms and what happened to her. The scandal to which Aquino has been linked began last November when a three-year-old boy said he was abused at the Presidio Daycare Center. Authorities found evidence of molestation, including six cases of sexually transmitted infected, I can't uh, pronounce it, chlamydia, and in 58 children who had this disease, a civilian daycare worker, it's spelled 
C-H-L-A-M-Y-D-I-A. A civilian daycare worker, 34-year-old Gary Hambright, who is a Southern Baptist minister, as that other article said, was arrested. And after charges were dismissed, Hambright has been reindicted on 12 counts of sodomy, oral copulation. The case took a bizarre twist when a three-and-a-half-year-old girl spotted Aquino, and I mentioned that last week, and described the apartment and the walls and the cross and so forth. Aquino's <clears throat> wife, whose name is Lilith, the Newsweek uh, called attention to this fact. Curiously, in medieval Jewish folklore is the name of Adam's first wife, who became a demon after the creation of Eve. Police searched the house and confiscated videotapes, photographs, they didn't say what they showed, and he is now assigned to the U.S. Army Reserve Personnel Center in St. Louis. And they also don't tell about his taking uh, people from the NATO exercises in 1982 or his years in Vietnam with his expertise in mind control. Aquino insists he's innocent of molestation. I never met the child in my life, although it's interesting, and he can't explain how she described where he lived. He makes no secret of his leadership of Temple of Set. He has, according to sources, fewer than 100 members, and I don't believe that at all, including perhaps half a dozen of Aquino's fellow soldiers. Well, he's a lieutenant colonel, similar to Ollie North, and if he takes soldiers who are officers, I understand they're high officers, and he teaches, instructs the War College, and the uh, gives suggestions for mind control for the entire mass population. Uh, six people could change the course of history, just as six could have with Iran-Contra, given free reign to do all the things they want. They said he is forthright about his group's beliefs and practices. In his writing, he prophesies a coming apocalypse in which only the elect members will survive. Now, that's the Jerry Falwell Armageddon philosophy, that is taught inside the White House that a very few will survive and all the rest are going to die. And I'm sure with his background in Heinrich Himmler and the Waffen SS and his worship of the Nazis, you could expediently put a lot of people in ovens without waiting for the great uh, beast of revelations to come and all those biblical prophecies. You could help it along a little by getting rid of millions and millions of people. He says his interest in the occult rituals of the Nazis do not indicate sympathy for their policies, but he shows people with great pride and glee. His eyes light up but with holding the dagger of the Waffen-SS, and he has these ceremonies to recreate what was happening at the castle of Westphalia where Heinrich Himmler was. So come on now, let's not believe this is a study of history. Then it's, Newsweek says, whatever the superstitious masses may think of this, it hasn't hurt his career in the Army which has known about his religion since 1981, that's seven long, six long years. Since that time, he was promoted from major and received a top secret, oh, it, there's the top secret clearance, and he attended the National Defense University in Washington. He has an absolute constitutional right to his beliefs, unless there is illegal uh, behavior associated with it, said Major Greg Rickson. But the illegal activity is the sexual abuse of the children and taking them away and using them for whatever purposes they were used and taking them off the premises. But if he isn't charged for that, then it isn't illegal, then he can continue the other practices. If he were locked up for what he did or to have these children at his home, and maybe he will be, we don't know, uh, then the illegalities come out. It's not what he thinks, but it's what he's practicing in preparation for what he believes that only the chosen, the kind that he wants to believe in the demon and Satan, should survive. And uh, he hasn't explained what he's going to do with the others. So this uh, article concludes that the Army has the greatest child care center in the world. They're responsible for more than 90,000 children, and now they must uh, guard against molesters, satanic Christian, or otherwise. So Newsweek did did give a little bit of his story. Now, last week, I listed a summary of parts of the Aquino story and uh, the articles that they came from, and I want to continue with the details of those articles. Some have been in the summary, but I want you to see and hear how this has unfolded as a background for the kinds of activities that Heinrich Himmler 
had in Germany and the parallels and the desires of what this particular gentleman wants and has expressed that he wants. Uh, one large story, one of the first ones to come out was October 30th, 1987, titled Satanic Sect Leader Linked to Presidio Daycare Probe. And the important thing about these articles is how they make apologies for him and skirt around getting to the hard facts of how did this child recognize him and telling us what the police are at least locking him up if there must be something in those videos and movies and tapes they took. And if not, explain how this child knew where those people when she saw them and could describe the place where she was taken. Now, this article from the San Francisco Examiner, just the highlights of the article, said San Francisco police are invest investigating Army Reserve officer of a satanic cult. The juvenile division inspector, his name is Glenn Pam Aloff, Pam Aloff, uh, and he heads the search. He headed the search of the home that is linked to Gary Hambright, who's now been charged with these crimes. The police raided the home August 14th, owned by Army Reserve Lieutenant Colonel Michael Equino and uh, his wife Lilith and seized 36 videotapes, negatives, photo albums, costumes, cassettes, masks, stars, and so forth, uh, investigating child uh, pornography and sexual molestation. And the search came from the complaint of people at the Presidio, the little girl who recognized uh, this couple at the uh, commissary. Mike Luquino now lives in St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, he's the high priest of the Temple of Seth. And Glenn Pamloff of Juvenile Division said, and I quoted this last week, he could not see how his satanic cult of this Equino could be involved since it has worked very hard to be a decent, constructive, and responsible organization. And remember that quotation when I go into the interest of this particular gentleman and the questionable involvement of uh, 100 children that have been checked, 58 have been molestation victims, and the indictment of Hambright is only for 10 children. They're not even going to bring in the mass numbers that have been sexually molested. The U.S. attorney, the assistant U.S. attorney, Robert Robinson, said that he will go ahead and prosecute Mr. Hambright April the 4th of this coming year and that he was aware of the Quino investigation, but that he has no intention as of yet to the prosecutors or the FBI. And they are convinced that uh, Hambright acted alone and Quino wasn't involved. Now, we heard the FBI say that Lee Harvey Oswald acted alone and Sir Han Surhan acted alone and Jim Jones' operation was on his own. And we also know that J. Edgar Hoover worked with uh, Heinrich Himmler through Interpol and the International Police until Pearl Harbor took place and that men like Alan Dulles of our OSS were working with SS Carl Wolf and Heinrich Himmler. Those weren't considered crimes to be working with the top Nazis, the Gestapo, the death head, the order of the death head during the war. So the San Francisco Police Department don't think it's a crime now that these same people have that ideology in 1987. The authority in San Francisco said the Aquini Quino investigation, as far as they're concerned, is a lone person and they do, it doesn't involve more than one person. The Aquino investigation is the first indication to the public that it may involve more than one. The authorities say it is only one. And when this little girl, as I said, went to the house, she recognized it and the clothing and the people that took her uh, there. She identified them. The San Francisco examiner said the whole thing is pretty traumatic. Uh, and Aquino said the same thing. If they're upset, we are upset. And that he was willing to work with the authorities because he was sure that uh, uh, they would clear him of all matters. And as of this date, they have. He wouldn't say how many times he visited San Francisco since he left the Army Presidio. And he went to Washington to attend the National Defense University in Washington, D.C., to train to head up the Army Reserves. He's part of U.S. Army Reserve personnel in St. Louis. But he was in San Francisco in August when he was recognized, and he was there uh, many times back and forth. Now, his explanation for, uh, oh, I got to notice it's the end of the half hour. I got a producer here. <laughs> I would have got on that in one minute. His explanation for uh, taking them to this particular uh, location, his members of the Church of Set 
was to show pictures of what he said were wax museum exhibits of the London Dungeon Museum that people who went to his church were simply seeing wax museum exhibits of the London Dungeon. Can you imagine what that did to the little children? Or one or more who were taken to his house instead of going to London. He has duplications there, and that's what they would be seeing if they were there. Now I'll continue with the second half of uh, World Watchers and go into a case, a case you just turned on during this first half hour, regarding the nursery school in San Francisco, the sexual molestations, but they've been taking place all over the United States. And at West Point, there were satanic rites against small children in the private nursery schools and the army schools are having a an epidemic of information of children being exposed to rituals, satanic rituals. So uh, the San Francisco area is taking the lead only because a little girl happened to recognize a couple who were living in St. Louis or this story would never have come out. And it may become a very large story if people understand the historical context. Otherwise, it will get buried. And already in the San Francisco Chronicle today, there was an article that uh, Representative Barbara Boxer was getting too hysterical about this case. She should cool off. Or it'll affect the prosecution. Well, the prosecution is getting off with 10 children and not 50 that were molested. And uh, uh, they're covering up the major part. The idea, keep quiet, we'll get a good prosecution, is ridiculous because if you don't bring these things out, you don't bring them into the case and get a prosecution that's just at all. And if you bring it out too soon, they can say you ruined the prosecution. Either way, the intention is to let the major factors off and hit the Baptist minister, not the Church of Satan. So I hope this gets attention and continues to grow. The next article I want to share is from... Uh, the San Francisco Examiner, the, a continuation, rather, of uh, this is October 31st, 1987, about the child abuse. It says the police and federal agents, although they received numerous reports of sexually molested children, many involved in bizarre cult rituals, they're taking this very slowly. There were children stuck with needles in parts of their bodies, people in costumes and robes, and Captain Paul Cota, the head of the juvenile division, said the case is so sensitive it could be jeopardized if details were released, but it's so sensitive it could be covered up if the details aren't told. U.S. Attorney Joseph Russinelli said the federal case of the Presidio children molestation will not change substantially before this next April and that anything occurred off the base will be within the jurisdiction of the San Francisco police. Now, I am not a lawyer. I don't know what this means, but the molestations, uh, the some of them took place right at the Army Presidio base in San Francisco and at other Army bases around the United States. But when a parent leaves their child off at an Army base at a nursery school and the person in charge gives them to a lieutenant colonel who's still in the Army, I shouldn't think it would matter where he lived or she lived if they're delivered to an officer wearing the uniform and off clothes, wearing the Satan uniform at that time, but it's under the employ of the United States government transferred to a lieutenant colonel, I don't think that the Army should get off of this case, that it is a military case, and the San Francisco police uh, don't have the sophistication or jurisdiction to deal with this. And Michael Aquino, uh, besides being a full-time employee in St. Louis, Missouri, was stationed in Fort McNear in Washington, where he met high, people high up in military government and has held a top security clearance for many years and worked with the Green Berets, the Special Forces in Vietnam, and he trained as a specialist in psychological warfare. Now, he may say we don't do satanic rituals with children uh, off uh, the base or at my home at all, or talk about these things, but if children go to the equivalent of a torture wax museum that he brings people to see, and he's saying that's what they saw, that's much, uh, pretty much part of psychological warfare, just to go see that. And he was, uh, according to his officers, superbly qualified to command a virtual expertise in the area of psychological, psychological operations, 
and the Army Efficiency Report said he set the highest personal standards and holds himself to those standards with his military degree. He served as a liaison officer in NATO countries. He's been a consultant and faculty member at the U.S. Army Command and General Staff College, a faculty member. He's a licensed security dealer registered with the New York Stock Exchange, a former employee of Merrill Lynch. Now, Merrill Lynch's chairman was Donald Reagan, uh, former Secretary of the Treasury and Chief of Staff of the White House. Merrill Lynch, uh, another broker from Merrill Lynch, was the gentleman who ran the bunker in Philadelphia who was pulled in just about four months ago. Uh, uh, he has his Rolls Royces and his fancy cars, and there were people tied as slaves underneath his house and bodies underneath the house. Goodness knows how many were killed. He was taken away, a very sophisticated man in a black part of town who got people who were mentally sick, who lived nearby in an institution and had a bunker mentality and activities and sex slaves and murders. He was also part of Merrill Lynch, and Merrill Lynch has been identified with that. Steve Baum, I mentioned earlier, the Worldwide Guns and Drugs Network. I, this may all be coincidental, but it's interesting that Aquino, this uh, Maurice Aquino, in addition to psychological operations and NATO, and a consultant to the faculty at U.S. Army Command and General Staff College, is also a licensed security dealer for the New York Stock Exchange of Merrill Lynch. Another article from the San Francisco Chronicle Tuesday, November the 11th, titled, Army Says the Constitution Lets Satanists Hold Top Secret Job. And this article says the high priest of the Satanic Church is protected constitutionally. The question is whether he's trustworthy, whether he can do his job in the Army, and there's nothing that indicates that there's any problem that the Army is concerned about. Michael Aquino maintains his clearance even though he performs na Nazi cult, occult rites. He describes himself as the Antichrist, his, his Temple of Set literature. He was thoroughly investigated before he received his security in the Army. He was reinvestigated periodically in accordance with U.S. Army regulations. And Major Greg Rickson, again quoting him, there is no part of the liturgy of his church that causes us any security problems. He believes that uh, the annihilation of many people is going to take place. And he wrote his own scripture. He has books that he quotes of Satan's. They're supposed to be written by experts of Satan. And he has a book. Uh, the book is called the coming, uh, the book of coming forth by night, with his Nazi philosophies in it. Aquino has conducted occult rituals patterned on ceremonies by Nazi leader Heinrich Himmler in the German castle, once used by the Nazi SS for magic, black magic ceremonials during the Third Reich, and he's duplicating them and doing them now. This is from the San Francisco Chronicle, November the 3rd. The Nazis considered the black arts and satanic worship part of the ancient Germanic tradition. Aquino, in his book, Crystal Tablet of Set, wrote that he performed rituals he wanted to recreate an order of knighthood for the followers of Satan, and therefore he would take members of NATO and join chiefs of staff to recreate his orders of knighthood. Aquino has encouraged his followers to study the beliefs of Nazi terrorist groups, the VEM, V-E-H-M, which is very important, and the Thules, I, I mentioned them last week, the Thules Gesellschaft and the Anar Arab, two fanatic right-wing Aryan groups that existed before and during Hitler's reign, and he has his military cohorts studying and encouraging to study the Nazi terrorist groups. He makes no secret of his involvement in satanic worship. We are here for people who are seriously interested in the philosophy. The Crystal of Set is a collection of his writings. The book has descriptions of the use of lesser black magic, greater ma black magic, and he has classified them into the Order of Vampire, the Order of the Trapezoid, the Order of the Beast. The Order of the Vampire studies legendary vampire powers such as invisibility and powers when you are possessed by the Cetians. Through our black magic in ways that are special to the children of the night, we will further enhance and develop our powers. And he has this degree in psychological operations, worked with in, in Southeast Asia, taught college courses in the Bay Area, 
and writes books on this and takes members of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. This article in San Francisco Chronicle said one section of the book contains a reading list for Temple members on subjects such as fascism, totalitarianism, and magic. The list refers to Mein Kampf, the Messiah, the occult roots of Nazism. Security clearances, according to the Army regulations, could be denied to people who espouse subversive political views, but he doesn't disguise his activity, and his views are not relevant to the U.S. military. They don't consider it subversive. Even though Heinrich Himmler and Adolf Hitler wrote that their goal was to take over the entire world, to have a 1,000-year Reich, to exterminate two-thirds of the world population, this isn't considered subversive, and he has books and ways for which the elite few will survive. Another story, November the 2nd, in San Francisco Examiner, Presidio Satanist, a scary enigma to observers, and he admitted in Newsweek he's a little bit scary. The article says the Satanist is a scary enigma. He really believes he is supernatural. He has evolved in some kind of godlike being with unworldly powers. Aquino has a pale face eyebrows that stab upward like horns of the devil, shiny black hair shaped into a prominent widow's peak over his forehead. He looks more like a 1930s Dracula than what he is, Satan's earthly lieutenant, the Prince of Darkness. That is the term that Richard Pearl uses for himself, and Richard Pearl, uh, who recently resigned from the Pentagon to continue his satanic, and I believe their satanic operations, in preparation for World War III that he and John Lehman, former Secretary of the Navy, talked about so much. Uh, Richard Pearl always referred to himself as the Prince of Dark Darkness. It would be interesting to know if he went into any of the meetings at Westphalia at Hitler's Castle with Aquino, who came from Southeast Asia and the Special Forces in the Green Berets with very high bona fides. As I say, he's proud of being the Prince of Darkness, and so is Richard Pearl. Many, of, many Presidio officers see him and thought wearing his black shirt, his clerical collar, and a satanic medallion around his neck that it was a little weird, but it was okay with the military at the Presidio. Just try to get a long-haired hippie with whiskers and sandals into the Presidio, maybe eating a vegetarian meal, and they'd call the military police. But with Aquino, this is okay with them. And they know that he has a mission, and he's quite open about his mission. He is one of the Army's experts on psychological warfare. And the article in San Francisco Examiner said that does make him a little scary. The police, the FBI, and the Army have long been curious about the activities. Uh, why didn't they follow him? Or maybe they did to Westphalia, Germany. Aquina has not been arrested since a three-and-a-half-year-old three child recognized him. And uh, the person who recognized him is a stepdaughter of a Presidio assistant chaplain and described, again, the room and the ceiling and the wife and uh, who put on the men's clothing. And the men, two men, were with this child, and they took pictures of her in bed and sexually abused her and also in a bathtub with some dog's feet on it, and she gave a full description. Until July 1986, he was a full-time student at the Pentagon's National Defense. Again, I've said that in the United States, he said, just paid me the highest honor. They promoted me, Aquino said, to the post at the War College and by sending me to that post. Then, lo and behold, I return home and have this outrage that the police have entered my apartment. Aquino had a dazzling military career, the Bronze Star, the Air Medal, the Army Commendation Medal. Uh, graduated on the commandant's list from command and general staff, wrote ROTC textbooks for the United States Army, retired in 1982 and was the stockbroker at Merrill Lynch, then went back to the reserves to be a teacher in charge of reserves in St. Louis, Missouri. Not only was Aquino's status reaffirmed, but he was promoted from major to lieutenant colonel, and that's what he was saying in Newsweek, they like me a lot. The city police intelligence memos in San Francisco indicate that as long ago as 1981, the authorities were noting the Temple of Set's obsession with Adolf Hitler's Nazis, that he claimed to be reporting directly to the Joint Chiefs of Staff in Washington, D.C., and that a number of the Temple of the Set Satanists were in military intelligence along with Aquino, and he was reporting his activities 
his Nazi activities to the Joint Chief of Staff. Aquino shows visitors to his home in San Francisco, and I assume elsewhere, his ritual dagger. It was once owned by World War II, a Waffen-SS general. He boasts about the ritual he performed in the Hall of the Dead at Wilhelmsburg Castle in West Germany during his 1980 tour of European NATO bases. During World War II, the Westphalian Castle was the occult sanctuary for Himmler's Waffen-SS elite. He professes contempt for the new neo-Nazis. Those are the skinheads and the young punks, the new ones. He deplores them. Uh, and, of course, the Waffen-SS and their allegiance have a bloodline going back 600 years, so these neo-Nazis are simply a bunch of punks with nothing to do on the streets who can be used later, but he has contempt for them. They're not the real thing. He once urged the Pentagon in a controversial psychological warfare study entitled Mind War to overcome enemies by mobilizing every means of domestic and foreign propaganda to include brainwashing of the entire United States public at home. He argued in a study called Mind War that there is no substitute for victory, total victory, the mind war scenario that he's written for the Joint Chiefs and the military academic circles is a scenario that could be used as a theoretical paper and has been circulated and written for the military circles. It was not a product of Satanism. He said it's not from the Temple of Set, but a military and psychological question of how to control the minds of the entire United States population as well as the world. Uh, and Mind Wars is supposed to be a very important book written about a first Earth battalion. This is using the satellite, satellite system and the space wars. And he also had a, a, a study done for the Pentagon called Project Atlantis, a plan to be music by the Jefferson Starship and satanic messages from the Temple of Set to Earth from an orbiting space station. Well, Ollie North had access to orbiting space stations, and if you look at, at Ollie North's face or replay the tapes or remember it, he was in a sort of a star days condition where if a question was asked to him and the question was only half asked, he had to whisper to Brennan Sullivan, his attorney, what he should answer, and there was indications that Ollie North had been the victim of psychological operations, and, of course, they both were the special forces in Southeast Asia. And remember the memos of Admiral Poindexter to uh, the, Ms. Robert McFarlane of the National Security. Maybe we should send Ollie to Bethesda for a while. Uh, right now he's been testifying before the grand jury, and Ollie North le gets a question, then leaves the hall, goes out and asks Brendan Sullivan, and goes back to the room. This is the man who is holding the football that could decide the atomic bombs going off, World War III and carrying it around with uh, Ronald Reagan and traveling to Central America with Henry Kissinger, making important decisions for this country. Now, I wonder if Aquino is so high up with the Joint Chiefs, Chiefs in NATO and psychological operations and textbooks, and as I say, special forces, and a stockbroker at Merrill Lynch, how far he rubbed or how close he rubbed to the Joint Chief, to the head of the White House, the Chief of Staff, who was chairman of Merrill Lynch at a time when he was back there at Merrill Lynch. The plan, according to his report, was scuttled, his satanic plan, because they were nervous about the killer satellite technology. And in addition to being full-time military in psychological warfare and a stockbroker at Merrill Lynch, he also studied and taught political science at Golden Gate University and uh, you know, then took a few years out of the Army and went back as a lieutenant colonel at working with the reserves. The reserves are the pet project of Edwin Meese and Mr. Gufrida, who set up the Federal Emergency Management Edge, and the reserves are being trained down in Honduras and Central America, sent out of the states for the first time, and those are the people that can bring the war home by using what they learned there in the jungles and rivers to turn against us when they come home someday. This Aquino also holds a doctor's degree from University of Santa Barbara, I mentioned last week, and he was once a national commander of the Eagle Scout Society. And I have articles on the molestation of Eagle Scouts. That's been quite prominent in the news, too, but not linked to the occult, but that has been happening. Aquino, according to San Francisco, is charming, sometimes self-deprecating. He worships not so much the devil as pure intelligence. He has a high IQ, and he says Satanists are the geniuses. Those are the ones who can digest the Temple of Set's daunting metaphysical theory, 
with their attempts to burnish the devil's tarnished public image. They want to give the devil a good name, and the geniuses are the ones to understand that the devil is wonderful and that his image has been tarnished by Christians and others. In 1968, as a newly commissioned second lieutenant in the 82nd Airborne Division, that's when uh, this Aquino saw Rosemary's baby and was enchanted by the idea of Satan. He started to attend the Church of Anton LaVey in San Francisco, the founder of the Church of Satan. In the next weeks to follow, I'll begin to connect the uh, Manson family murders and the son of San David Berkowitz, Berkowitz also to the military, the military establishment, the Vietnam veterans, and to LeVay and to the very people that Aquino was associating with in San Francisco. He broke off from LeVay and started his own church. And LeVay was a technical advisor to Roman Polanski for Roman Mary's baby. And then what Polanski got, a, he was an orphan of the Auschwitz concentration camps himself, he got his wife and a baby, it seems like this would be his only baby, stabbed and killed by the Manson family who also worked with uh, with LeVay and the Church of Set, this Satan lover, Aquino, works with, trained with LeVay and then opened his own church. It's a splitter group. And one is the San Francisco scene of the occult and the various sacrifices and so forth. And he became the demon or the Satan lover of the military intelligence, which is much more sophisticated and protected than even Mr. LeVay in San Francisco. Aquino felt LeVay wasn't nice enough to Satan. He didn't believe in the devil as much as Aquino did. So he assumed the power of the Prince of Darkness and lets LeVay take care of the street people and their particular happenings. Now, there was an article in the San Francisco, uh, San Jose Mercury, rather, November the 4th, 1987. Presidio Care Center takes the test of the first army scrutiny. There have been occult uh, mutilations, I call them, of children on the army bases all around the United States, and the only one that has so far gone gone to court or is going to court that has gone before a grand jury is the one in San Francisco that will be the first test case, and that will be closed down. And I believe the reason it's going so far in San Francisco and not at other military establishments is that the people in the San Francisco area are probably the most sophisticated politically and the brightest and know how to operate or move when these things happen. And while the parents of the children there are military establishment, and I mentioned one father who graduated from West Point, who had two children at this school, who were sexually abused in the occult uh, ceremonies, he knew where to go and how to go about it in the San Francisco. While he may not use the street smarts of the San Francisco people, unless his back's against the wall, he knew how to use it when it came to the push and shove, because he couldn't go to the military for the protection he thought he was getting. So it was very interesting and fearful, but interesting to see this conference up in San Francisco where parents of McMartin School and parents from Gilroy and families from around the state spoke. And among them were two parents from the military establishment whose children had been abused with the occult. And that is far, far more scary if there's a scale of 1 to 10 because of seeing other children killed in front of them hammered to death, dead animals, animals killed, threats to kill their parents, and so forth. This article from the San Jose Mercury says that uh, there's been reported that 26 of the 242 Army daycare centers throughout the world have had problems with the uh, sexual molestation and the occult. 26 have been reported throughout the world, including the U.S. Military Academy itself at West Point and Fort Dix, New Jersey. The Mercury News reported in August the parents of the Presidio and West Point believed the Army was trying to cover up the sex abuse, which it was, instead of making the daycare centers safe for the children. And they ordered a congressional investigation, which wasn't happening and hasn't happened. And as far as we know, Barbara Boxer is the first uh, representative now to ask for Congress to investigate it. The San Francisco Chronicle had an article November the 5th Satanism linked to scores of U.S. child abuse cases. Satanism and cult rituals are listed all over the country. Children two and three years old, drinking blood, seeing animal sacrifices, sexual abuses. They talked of cannibalism, eating these dead, 
ritual sacrifice of children. This is what they're seeing. And they said it is highly explosive that the testimony of even small children is filled with atrocities to and greater than some of concentration camps. They've been through every kind of imaginable and unimaginable torture people have gone through. And there's cases of, 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 of that are coming up of striking evidence of ritualized sexual abuse case after case. This is a long article about the amount of uh, things going on and the use of rabbits, ears cut off, black coats, uh, capes, and also there are people, mothers who are breeders, who are having children so the children can be cut up and killed in front of them and other children. The term is breeders, if you can believe such a thing, and this is what is happening and they're not uh, pulling this particular man in who has all the desires of a mass genocide except for a hand few. And he talks about it openly and goes through the rituals with people from the Joint Chiefs in NATO and is still uh, is promoted and is still a lieutenant colonel in the reserves. And they haven't yanked him back here and locked him up and chained him and uh, uh, made an explanation of how he keeps getting promoted with full knowledge of what he's doing in Europe and so forth. Well, I'm going to conclude this part of World Watchers and uh, do some more on that case because it will evolve and get much larger if people aren't afraid to come forward. The problem is that the children were told that if they tell what happened, their parents would be killed. And an example was the McMartin School where the woman who turned in the matter, the police, was in fact killed. And uh, uh, killing one person throughout the country who's important, and we don't know how many other witnesses are being killed to keep the children in those cities and places quiet. We only know what happened here on the West Coast, and we're lucky to know that at all. The name of this broadcast is World Watchers. As I said, I'm Mae Russell. It is program number 833, November the 23rd, 1987. Seymour Hirsch had a long article in yesterday's Examiner Chronicle uh, titled, Secret Army Unit Aided the CIA Efforts. This is about the Special Operations Division. Uh, Seymour Hirsch uh, writes in this article about a group called, the abbreviation is DCSOPS, the Special Operations Division, and under that, the DCSOPS, uh, a group that wore civilian clothes, unmarked airplanes, trained off military bases. The SOAB, the Special Operations Aviation Battalion, there was Jews in Grenada, the Sea Spray Group, unknown until 1985, the ISA, the Intelligence Support Activity, and the important thing about this uh, article, and it's a two-part article, and I hope Seymour Hirsch writes about it, is that the special operation units uh, that link directly to um, Oliver North have a direct uh, con uh, relationship to his Delta Force, and I'll be doing a lot more on this article, the two-part article, soon. And the Delta Force is the group that Maurice Aquino is a member of from Southeast Asia. And I truly do believe that the glassy-eyed look that Oliver North has and the relationship between my, the mind control of Aquino and the use of Oliver North in direct contact to G. Gordon Liddy, who's worked with the, with the Nazi Odessa, will put a smack into the Himmler Castle, into the Pentagon, and the Special Forces. So while I'm not going to do Part 3 tonight, I'll continue next week probably to continue the scandal of West Point, Presidio, child molestation, the occult, the occult in the military, and update that for you, getting back to it next week. Uh, there are links that can be made absolutely to the Delta Force, to Aquino, to West Point, and then to North and the Delta Force and Liddy advising North with an instant communication into Liddy's home. And I think we'll end up right with the Waffen-SS, the Gestapo, the Odessa. So I just mentioned this article. It was in the Examiner Chronicle yesterday, and Part 2 wasn't out today, so I imagine it'll follow very quickly. This is broadcast number 834, November the 30th, 1987. This week and next week, December the 6th, I will do what they refer to in some of the investigations as hard-hitting. I'll be talking some more about the dirty stuff, the Waffen-SS, the child abuse, the children sacrifice, the adult sacrifices, the rituals of the satanic cult that go right up through the Pentagon, the Defense Department, and the Justice Department, and linking to very, very high up in the military. 
And then because it is so revolting, I will go on the easy stuff, the stuff prior to the Satan, Heinrich Himmler castle, rituals done with uh, people in the Pentagon such as Michael Aquino. So December 13th, 21st, and 28th, we'll have what I call the normal news that may be hard for people anyway, but I call it the regular news, and I will not put you through this through Christmas. We'll cut back a little because it's pretty heavy stuff. I talked about the child abuse, the Church of Satan, Michael Aquino, and the Pentagon, and Heinrich Himmler's castle, and I'm going back into that again this evening with you and continue with an update of that news and do this for the next couple of weeks. And then there is a book, not a new book, but it's new to me, and it's hard to get, but try to find. It's called Mind Wars, the true story of secret government research into the military potential of psychic weapons. And that book also mentions the research that Barbara Honiger was doing in the White House when she was working in the White House. Two of those books, of these books, mention her name. And this book has to do with the 1st Earth Battalion. And I believe this may be the link between Oliver North, the Delta Force, and Michael Aquino, and Mind Control coming out of Vietnam. The Church of Sad, Satan, Hitler's Waffen SS could very easily connect, and this may be one of the big connecting links of those elements. And then the Iran Contra report that I gave out last week with the address of the government printing office. So if you send a self addressed stamped envelope to me, I'll give you the titles, the publishers, and uh, you can get these books uh, for yourself or look forward to them. And I'll bet you everyone during this falling year is going to have one birthday. So you can put that on your wish list if you uh, are wise, because this is a wonderful collection to have. And we're going to feel the pains of the Reagan administration for years, so we may as well get some of these books and understand it. Now, several weeks ago, November the 9th, on uh, broadcast 831, I gave the sources of a lot of articles where I had the summary of Michael Aquino in the San Francisco Church of Satan. And at the bottom of the list, there was an article, Satanist accused of molesting a girl, girl, soldier calls the probe a witch hunt. That's really a play on words, going for a witch hunt, talking about the Church of Satan. And in the article, Linda Blood is one of the people quoted in the article, just all coincidental, that name or so forth and so forth. But I want to go into that article and some more about the Church of Satan tonight, this particular article and the details of what it means. It was written by Linda Goldstein for the San Jose Mercury. And this is the way she wrote it. I only extracted it for you, but I want it to sink in because it's going to be the groundwork for weeks of broadcast when the new year begins after this next week's broadcast. She says he is a devil worshiper with a doctorate degree. He's an Eagle Scout turned Antichrist. And I emphasize the Eagle Scout because of other articles I'm going into of sexual abuse of other areas of Eagle Scouts. In the yellow pages, he's listed churches, Satan, Lieutenant Michael Aquino, a military officer with access to top secrets and a suspect in the bizarre case of child sexual abuse at Presidio in San Francisco. The controversy at the Presidio took place when as many as 60 children who attended the daycare center were allegedly molested. It took on vast proportions when the Army launched an all-out review. The Army has 300 daycare centers, and they have over 900,000 children every day. And on Sundays, they were molested while the parents were at church. This year alone, there have been nine similar child abuse cases on military bases that they're reporting, and previous incidences reported at the U.S. Military Academy at West Point in New York, at Fort Dix, New Jersey, and at the Army Daycare Center in Germany. For Aquino, the controversy is personal and bitter. It's the only public black mark against him in two-decade military record with the Pentagon. It's extraordinary. Now, the woman in charge of police activities in San Francisco regarding the cult, and I'll go to her quote later, said that in 1983 they had evidence that Aquino should have been taken out of the Army, but the Army insisted on keeping him. So the black mark now is only one that comes because this little child recognized him in his home, identified the home and the interior, but he's gotten away with other complaints, and he also is being held, according to a news account last week, on possible child stealing. 
and that gets into those missing children again. The article says no charges so far have been administered against them. He uh, performed satanic rituals at a Nazi castle, which I mentioned before, and I'm going back to that in one moment. His dark eyebrows arch upward. A short crop black hair comes to a prominent widow's peak. Aquino came to Satanism, he said, by accident. He had just finished his undergraduate work at the University of California in Santa Barbara when he happened to attend the premiere of Rosemary's Baby and was intrigued by the entourage of Anton LaVey, the founder of the Church of Satan and an advisor to the film. Now, he not only advised Roman Polanski on this film, but he worked with the Manson family up in the Haight-Ashbury, so there was a double whammo for Polanski after making this film, and it was also filmed in the Dakota building where John Lennon was shot. He lived in that building, and scenes were filmed there, and he was killed in front of that building. All that, I suppose you might think, is coincidental, but I don't know what is coincidental any longer. Now, here is the most important part of this particular article. Aquino left for Vietnam a few months later after being associated with Anton LaVey, the church with the Church of Satan. He left for Vietnam a few months later serving as a psychological warfare expert and there he joined the Church of Satan and he became a high priest. Now, the question is, how many churches of Satan are there in the defense department? You may not believe in God, but how many are antichrist? How many antichrist worshipers of the devil are doing mind control, psychological warfare, working with the Delta forces, the Marines, the special branches of the army? And what was Maurice Aquino's psychological experience? Did it relate to Oliver North? Oliver North was running around naked with a gun. He, there were descriptions of his going totally berserk, that he took R&R, rest and recreation, at a mental hospital. There were documents in the NSC papers that they found where Admiral Poindexter of the Navy was suggesting to the National Security Advisor, Robert McFarlane, that we send him to Bethesda Hospital, a Navy hospital, for a while. He didn't have a fever, he didn't have a gallbladder, he didn't have a physical fi uh, symptom, but Bethesda is where James Forrestal, the Secretary of the Navy, allegedly was suicidal or pushed out a window for very important reasons at the end of World War II. And what part of Bethesda was Poindexter going to send a man working for the NSC? Why did they keep him on the staff and what happens at at that uh, Bethesda, because if you watched Ollie North's testimony, and I luckily videotaped the whole thing, the man had a stare and glassy eyes. He had to have assistance for recall. The minute a question was half asked, he whispered to Brendan Sullivan, his attorney. Then he looked down at a piece of paper where answers could be written or clues with numbers, and then he started talking, and once one of the uh, members of the Congress asked him what he was reading, and he said, that's private between my, me and my attorney, but the answers were coming there. And so the question is, with his past history of being in a mental place, being in the Delta Force, in the Special Forces, with Michael Aquino being over there specializing in this kind of activity, because there are other links of Richard Secord to the Odessa, to G. Gordon Liddy and Robert Mardian, through their attorney, Mr. Green, uh, watching SS pictures down in the archives of the uh, Washington buildings that, where they would study the SS. And Michael Aquino was on television this past week, and the police in San Francisco had taken some of his videotapes. He claimed they were mostly Carl Sagan space, but in there you see, and I photographed the Waffen SS among just one among his belongings in a place was filled with swastikas and Nazis and the news accounts told about the Nazi uniforms. But he went into psychological warfare as expert and joined the Church of Satan. And the question for the armed forces, for the House Armed Services Committee, is how many people joined the Church of Satan? Uh, uh, David Berkowitz, of son of Sam Case, at links to the Manson family, went to Vietnam. He served his time. He was a Jew. He was adopted by a Jewish family. 
He was converted th- converted there into uh, becoming a Christian, but he went into Satanism and the son of Sam, Sam Killings, were a part of satanic ritual in New York City, these so-called random killings, killing women sitting in cars or on dates and so forth. And how many people coming home from Vietnam are doing these uh, these killings that don't appear to be related to a larger plan I brought in this evening, and maybe I won't have time till next week, on how many people around the country, just pulling out of my articles the past week, where the arms and legs are sawed off, they're being beheaded, they're being tortured with paper between their toes and the paper set on fire, and the, the tortures that are going on that I put under, uh, well, I'm separating the files, I'm putting them under a cult now, but I don't even remember what classification they were thrown in with just people who had died. And now I'm separating them, and we'll share those some of those with you. Now, this article says in 1975, LaVey broke off. With, he separated from Aquino, or Aquino left him, and he started his own church, a private organization that has internal revenue status. The, the uh, internal revenue gives him his tax deduction. The article says he has an IQ of 155, and many people from Mensa, those are the group with a high IQ, in search of knowledge, wherever the truth may be, are part of his organization, the Church of Satan. Members of the House Armed Services Committee and officials who oversee America's intelligence operations will not discuss Aquino's case. The police have refused to eliminate his name as a suspect. The Army stands by him and his access to top security secrets. Aquino works as a program analyst at the Army Reserve Personnel Center in St. Louis, Handing all personal letters for the res- all ser- personal matters for the reserves. Now, some of this we had on the air two weeks ago, but here's a point that is uh, I want to bring home. If I didn't do it then, I might even want to do it every week. In 1981, he was a reserve attaché to the Defense Intelligence Agency, and a year later, a student at the Foreign Service Institute, sponsored by the State Department. 1981. Uh, Daniel Graham, the head of Star Wars High Frontier, was the head in this time period, I have to look the, up the exact dates, of the Defense Intelligence Agency. There was a group that I uh, described, Peregrine, that was important to John Singlaub and Robert Owen and to the Death Squads. Remember the broadcast I did where their matters were too important to leave to the service that they hired people who had already killed, who showed their bona fides, the bona fides that did the killing, Peregrine's head, Mr. Meadows, and the two chiefs came out of the Defense Intelligence Agency, and they went on to hire the Keeney Meanies over in London to help with the death squads down in Central America and to fight along with the Contras. The uh, Defense Intelligence Agency was run, uh, and I'm sure once he retired from there, it wasn't very hard to go back with the old people. You were the chief of it. Daniel Graham shares offices with Fritz Kramer in Washington, D.C. I've had their address on the air. I've asked many, many times for the past years, who is Gustav Anton Fritz Kramer? And the question has been asked over and over again, even to members of the General Accounting Office coming to California. Is he the Waffen SS Fritz Kramer that was Hitler's plans officer? Because he was Hitler's favorite after the war, and Senator Joe McCarthy released that Waffen SS Fritz Kramer, Hitler's favorite. There was no history after the war, after the war, but as soon as he was out of Dachau prison, the other Fritz Kramer became head of the Pentagon. He was over Westmoreland in the entire Vietnam War, and he vis the Waffen SS. Then he set up the Church of Satan in Vietnam. This uh, Aquino says it was set up in the psychological warfare. He joined the Church of Satan in Vietnam. He was a high priest in Vietnam. And with his services at the uh, home and the, the offices, the church of Heinrich Himmler, it is actually uh, mandatory that we fingerprint or somebody take this Fritz Kramer before he dies and match it to the fingerprints. I have those for copy of fingerprints, whatever they're worth, as a prisoner at Dachau Prison because those would be uh, connections of Vietnam to the Church of Satan and Heinrich Himmler. And this article tells how Aquino worked in the Defense Intelligence Agency, which Peregrine was set up in 1981, 
and he was over in that exact office, and these were the killing teams that were set up to go around the world and were linked to Sing Laub and Robert Owen and uh, to the Oct uh, October 80 surprise with General Secord over in Iran at the time that uh, the, uh, the rescue mission was bundled and they didn't rescue the hostages to assure Reagan's becoming the president. This article says throughout his army career, Aquino made no secret of his involvement with Satanism, a forthrightness the army lauded him for. He's better for a security risk because he can't be blackmailed. He doesn't have anything to hide. He's a priest in the church. And the uh, military major Rickson said that he makes no bones about his Satanism. There's no pressure put on him and no comment about his access to top security clearances. Last year, he was at the National Defense University, and Aquino says that's as high as you can get. And in 1982, and I shared this with you before, it's very pertinent to this story. Again, he performed satanic rituals in Westphalian Castle, used as an occult sanctuary by Heinrich Himmler's SS elite in Nazi Germany. The Temple of Set has a newsletter where he told of performing the satanic rituals in the castle Hall of the Dead, while on a tour of NATO military installations in Europe. And this week or next week, I'm going to give an example of how the Justice Department is protecting satanic killers in uh, down in Fort Bragg, North Carolina, and has a man in jail for three life terms and a woman who participated in the satanic murders not only can't be heard, but the highest of the FBI chiefs in Dallas, and he was in Los Angeles and Memphis, uh, retired and helped investigate that case of the killings in Fort Bragg, and his life is in danger, and this FBI agent has been hiding ever since because the Justice Department is protecting the satanic killers and not and, and the operations of Satan and not going after the killers, letting somebody else serve time and letting them get the taste and the smell of blood. That involves an FBI agent by the name of Ted Gernison, who was helping this Mr. McDonald, Dr. McDonald. You might remember the case where he told about these occult people coming in and chopping his pregnant wife up, pregnant again, like Sharon Tate, his two daughters, Jeffrey McDonald, has three life sentences. And uh, I'll do more details on that case, but the FBI man's life hasn't been safe since the Justice Department found out that he knew somebody who had attended the ritual murder of his wife and children. So you have two agencies, the justice and the military, protecting and carrying this on. And it may go right up to the plans officer, the mentor of Kissinger and Haig, uh, Fritz Kramer, uh, who set up the operations in Vietnam. Now this is May Brussel, and it is the second half of broadcast number 834. Uh, the story about Aquino, I think you get the point of the importance with NATO, the rituals, the Hall of the Dead. Now, I have several books, quite a few books on the Waffen SS, many of them, so I don't take all of this lightly. I've studied it for a long time. There's a chapter in a book called God and Beasts, the Nazis and the Occult. And I thought I would share with you a few sentences out of this book. It's written by Dusty, Dusty Sklar. It came out in 1977. Because when I go further into some of the things we're hearing that sound outrageous or read, it's better to have background of the thinking of these people wondering how do you uh, sacrifice humans. On the Geraldo Rivera show, this lady tells about watching child sacrifices and cutting their heart out when they're alive and cutting those little children up and eating them and burning people alive. Geraldo Rivera, who has a family now, he just took a deep breath and took a break after the 20 minutes and apologized and said uh, he wasn't sorry to have it on, but he apologized if there were children of an informative age home listening to that and suggested that the parents divert them away from the television because they were talking about the raw facts of what's going on in America. Now, in this book, God and the Beast, just a few sentences about Heinrich Himmler and uh, how the Waffen-SS operated. Uh, it, uh, Dusty explains that Himmler studied the occult. He, w he was interested in it. He had a huge library on the occult, everything he could get, and spiritualism. And he studied a man, Carl Duprell's book, Der Spiritu 
now I'm not going to pronounce these words right, despiritismus, called spiritualism, and he believed, according to this account, that there was something important about the transmigration of souls, and it gave him a new meaning, studying life and death. And this author says his interest in and sympathy with the occult endured throughout his entire life, and without it, the Reichsfuhrer of the Wappen SS would have been quite a different person if he didn't believe in it. His occultism, along with Hitler's belief in it, was bound up in eroticism and sex. And, of course, there is sexual abuse in all of these Satan uh, rituals. To uh, Hitler and Lance, a gentleman named Lance, and Adolf Hitler and um, Heinrich Himmler, sexuality was decadent. And the loose morality of Western Europe after the war seemed to them to travel like a plague spread by the decadent people, namely the Jews. Think of the movie The Cabaret and a lot of nightclubs were run by Jews in Germany. They believed the Jews were bestial in their passions, corrupting pure German womanhood, making women join the radical cause of feminism. They saw the Jews as cunning, practical pimps and pornographers, able to profit materially from prostitution and interest in filth, and these were popular themes for Himmler. Right after World War I, Himmler was in contact with a number of persons who were part of the Fry Corps. Those were the young groups that went out ruthlessly killing professors, teachers, people at random. In 1923, he joined the Fry Corps. I, and as a matter of fact, there have been articles that compared Oliver North's activities to the German Fry Corps. And this author said he must have enjoyed participating in the grand design to lead Germany to their greatness. He believed the Nazis would lead Germany because they were superior, and these people were frustrated with ambitions as soldiers having lost World War I. In 1925, the SS, the Schutzstaffel, the Waffen-SS, was formed as the bodyguard for Adolf Hitler in every district. Himmler was put in charge of the local units. By 1927, when the SS was nationalized, Himmler, because of his demonstrated abilities, was made deputy leader in 1929, the Reichsführer SS. Then the organization became a central bureaucracy to dispense terrorism, an elite political police giving Himmler power, second Adolf Hitler. What fitted Himmler for the job was his skill as pigeoning, pigeonholing people, assigning categories, and putting them into these spots. He was able to compel his black guards to go against their own standards of morality and justify horrifying murder tactics as a utopian idealism, the killing. He said proudly of his black uniformed SS, I know there are many people in Germany who feel sick when they see this black tunic. We can understand this, and we do not expect to be beloved by many people. Sometimes he saw the black guards as elite cadre of the Teutonic warriors, as medieval knights protecting their lord, Adolf Hitler. His interest in the Germanic past and the Middle Ages went back to his youth. He believed in transmigration of souls, and he believed in the reincarnation, that he was the reincarnation of the 10th century German Heinrich the F one the Fowler, with whom he communicated in his sleep. In 1937, he had the monarch's bones dug up, and put in the crypt of que que Quedlinburg Cathedral after a holy procession in 1937. In this time period, Heinrich Himmler was in charge of the international police, and J. Edgar Hoover in the United States was vice president of Interpol at this end of the United States, corresponding and working with names with Heinrich Himmler. But that's an aside. That comes from the book Interpol. I'm reading from God's Beast and the Nazis. He chose the town of Quedlinburg in the Hartz Mountains because it was founded by the king. He was the reincarnation. Himmler invited Germans to make a pilgrimage to the uh, tomb to honor Heinrich the Fowler. Yearly, on July the 2nd, the date of the king's death, Himmler held a midnight ritual in a clammy crypt. One of the great charms which the medieval monarch had for Himmler was his anti-Slav crusade. And he thought that was wonderful. On the thousandth anniversary of Heinrich's death, Himmler stood before Wehrmacht officers and braided and meddled SS dignitaries and continued the crusade for Germany's expansion to the east that Heinrich had left off. Himmler was obsessed, along with Hitler, with secret medieval society called the Order of the Teutonic Knights, and there a candidate had to prove noble German ancestry for eight generations on both sides of the family tree. And in the Waffen SS, it goes back six generations, and I have at my home a copy of the Waffen SS papers 
of Otto von Bolschwing, whose secretary was Reagan's appointment secretary, Helene von Dahm, and then our ambassador to Vienna. She made the appointments of the uh, Stanford Technology Trading Group, the Hakim Secords at National Security Council. She made these appointments for Reagan. She worked with Otto von Bolschwing, who was a member of the Waffen-SS going back those 600 years. I have that family chart at my home. The article says Himmler, in creating a secret order suitable for mass society, dispensed with any idea of social or economic aristocracy. The whole Aryan race was aristocratic. He admired the rigid organization of the Teutonic Knights, the strictness of their rules. Above all, he admired their secrecy. He kept writing down things on people's secrecy is what he admired most. He was a fanatical as a spy for the party. He knew what a powerful motivation it is to belong to a secret order with different rules and a hierarchical structure that could be its mere existence could hold members in a common bond subject to the same vows of silence or certain questions. And I wonder about Aquino becoming Church of Satan with psychological control in Vietnam if the secret society which came home, he came over, came home a high priest in the Church of Set if the Waffen SS wasn't setting it up over there to bring them home and they liked this secret order. In trying to create a new order of Teutonic Knights out of the SS, Himmler was mindful of the power of the Jesuits. According to his assistant, Walter Schellenberg, he deliberately built the SS on the principles of the Society of Jesus, using their statutes and spiritual exercises. Himmler was called the Black Jesuit by his enemies, and he was compared with the order's founder, Ignatius Loyola, by Hitler, who was pleased to have his fanatical devotion. Uh, and incidentally, the uh, two parts of the church, a lot of people don't know this, of the Catholic Church, the twins of the church, one is the Pope, who is called the White Pope, and the Jesuits, who do the converting and set up the missionaries and so forth, that is the black. The head of that is the black, the bl and Himmler was called the Black Jesuit. After the order's founder, Ignatius Loyola, Schellenberg testified at the Nuremberg trials that Himmler had the best and richest library of the Jesuit order. His literature was pursued at night for years. He built his SS organization according to Jesuit principles. And, of course, you remember, or maybe you don't, the Inquisition and the torture racks and the wiping out of civilizations such as the Mayans and the Incas and the American Indians, the westward movement, wiping out these organizations and the missions, treatment of genocide towards the Indians in this country up and down this coast. He built his organization according to that. Its basis was the Constitution for the Exercises of Ignatius de Loyola. And this is not, reading from this book, Gods, Beasts, and Nazis and the Occult, this is not anti-Catholic. There are Catholic Jesuits now, such as the Christic Institute. Bill Davis is a Jesuit priest, and uh, the Sanctuary Movement is set up by Jesuits. There is a whole branch now that are being very liberal, but we're talking about those that are pursuing it from a far, far right mentality and get the go-ahead from the Vatican for these activities, such as the 3A, the death squads in South and Central America and even now in the Philippines. This book says the supreme law was absolute in that church, and Himmler had been brought up as a Catholic. Blind obedience, and he himself, an SS general, was the order's general commander. In Westphalia, near Paderborn, he kept a medieval castle, the Wevelsburg, which served, so to say, as the SS monastery. The roots of this attitude go back to his father's education and his severe Catholic conduct of life. And it's in this church on NATO maneuvers, uh, a man with the top highest security clearance working for and taking members of the Joint Chief of Staff to the cult rituals of death, Westphalia, is where uh, Mr. Michael Aquino, uh, we know he was there once, probably he could go there every year, we wouldn't know, but he has written about his experiences with the Joint Chiefs and NATO exercises at the castle in Westphalia. And then this description from uh, Dusty Sklar says, The essential principle which Heinrich Himmler borrowed was the oath of absolute blind obedience. He outdid the Jesuits in order to eliminate all possible competition to his esoteric order uh, that, that he had. The SS 
had a common enemy with the church, which was the Freemasons, and his resistance to their doctrine, he fought the Freemasons. Heinrich Himmler had no appreciation for them or the Counter-Reformation, and he studied uh, and also wanted to do with all of those people who opposed his order, but his order went above the Jesuits. He became supreme over them and even bro broke with them. And the book says, Himmler's views and deeds, and this is very important, were not the excess of madness. They were not always rational, but they were not madness. They owe more to the disassociation of a fanatical occultist than to a divided personality. He spent much of his time and that of his men in investigating all kinds of research, and it didn't diminish his talent at all for a efficient organization. He wasn't split up to be in a mental hospital. He functioned really well. If his reality was non-ordinary, like Michael Aquino, he and he was not crazy at all, he was rather a person who was interested in good and evil spirits in invisible power, and he felt one day we will have to give an account of ourselves, that there's karma for our deeds, and this is very important. He felt that for his karma that you have to teach a person to look for the whole. He saw the world as a Germanic Aryan whole. He saw the whole world as a whole. And anybody who didn't serve the Germanic whole would have bad karma. You didn't have bad karma if you killed 6 or 20 million or 80 million. You had it if you didn't serve Germany the whole. When he went before his master, he was going to say, I did what you wanted me to for Germany. And this uh, Dusty Sklar said, a man has to sacrifice himself, according to Himmler, even though it is hard for him to do. He oughtn't to think of himself. It is pleasanter to concern yourself with flower beds rather than political dust heaps and refuse dumps. But flowers themselves won't thrive unless these things are seen to. Over and over again, Hitler, Himmler referred to the work of his SS men when they were placed in concentration camps to torture or murder alive or shoot as their sacrifice. It was though they, as though they had to suffer a greater ordeal than their victims. One of his most interesting speeches to officers sympathizes with their ordeal. To have stuck it out and at the same time to have remained a decent fellow. That is what makes us hard. To do anything we're told and then remain decent makes us hard. This is a page of glory in our history, he wrote, which has never been written and is never to be written. Every cause has its idea of sacrifice, calling on, on individuals to give up their well-being for the sake of something greater. Himmler's idea of sacrifice was influenced by Eastern philosophy. He learned to practice, after the sayings of Buddha and Rig Vedas and others, that detachment for your acts can be done. Well, it might seem silly or monstrous or foolish, the purifying of it, uh, it was purifying to the wise. Karma required, with the Waffen SS, the way he turned it around, it required only that individuals carry on their unavoidable duties, discarding any consequences. You won't lose sleep at night discarding any consequences. You take your unavoidable duty. If it's a thousand year right, that's what you do. He said one should not give up that act, one should not give up the activity to which one is born. If you're born to lead the SS, the duty incumbent on one through birth or caste or profession, even though this might be attended by evil, for all undertakings are enveloped by evil as fire by smoke. The disengagement from the effects of fulfilling one's duties was self-sacrifice. And this book in this chapter on the obedient man explains how he felt that people uh, would not be serving their duty if they didn't serve the thousand year Reich and whatever it took to kill or maim or to wipe out, you were doing it for the Aryans, for the Germans, and amorality is something relative. You don't have to deal with it. It could be linked with divine essence. And he said that the, um, the main job is that if the Aryans are the greatest and if it's necessary to kill everyone, who isn't an Aryan will do it. You can do it without guilt. It's a sacrifice to learn to kill and spill the blood, but you must learn to sacrifice. Now, on some more to Michael Aquino. 
there's an article this past weekend in the San Francisco Chronicle, Steps to Abolish New York Vigilante Child Protectors. This was November 24th. The state of New York is getting rid of the Westchester County Society for Prevention of Cruelty to Children because it turned out to be an armed secret police accountable to act absolutely no one. It's a bunch of vigilantes brandishing weapons and uh, running their own uh, office there, a, actually a terrorism un unit set up in New York, and one of the investigators said his office went into the Westchester organization. They received complaints that the members used dangerous, abusive techniques during warrantless arrests and detainments and, and regarding the welfare of minors, and that they found an arsenal of pistols more powerful than those used by most police departments. So there was a society in Westchester County for the prevention of cruelty to children, and it is armed and filled with secret police uh, weapons, weapons the police use, and even more, and brandishing weapons, handcuffs, and so forth. Then there was a story in the New York Times, November 20th, Army will close child care center, and it refers to San Francisco and the Presidio. It mentions Gary Hambright, who is under indictment for 10 molestations. Not a word, coast to coast, on the wire services about Michael Aquino. It says allegations of sexual abuse have surfaced. In th there's 300 child care centers, 94,000 children daily are being taken care of by the Army, and they've had complaints of at Fort Dix and at other um, Army centers, quite a few, 10% of all the Army centers out of 300. So you can 10% of that and see how many children have been reported being abused. Another article, San Francisco cop pleads guilty in arms case, and the San Francisco police have protected uh, this Aquino. A member of the police department said she tried, as I quoted before, to get him out of the Army in 1983. This policeman was just sent 15 years in prison because he was getting weapons from the munitions from Camp Pendleton, the Marine base in San Diego, he had received 10 stolen hand grenades. He then had 62 other grenades, 122 pounds of plastic explosives, 11,000 rounds of ammunition, 30 blasting caps, illegal sale of guns. A member of the San Francisco Police Department stockpiling these weapons. And that's how Frank Turple and George Corkle had got arrested in 1979, uh, selling, I think it was one or two million dollars round of ammunition to private people in the New York Police Department. In terms of children being molested, I don't know how many of you saw an ad in the San Francisco Chronicle. Those in the East wouldn't have seen this. The article's called Gross Toys for Shockproof Kids When Holiday Fun is Ugly. It's from the San Francisco Chronicle. Some of the toys, one is a monster built from scratch with boiling flesh that comes off to the bones. Another is a squeeze Sammy. A an alien blood, it's supposed to be an alien blood pours out from his nose. Another is a sizzle clay-like monster where the flesh peels, it fills into a vat, and there's a secret formula, and the flesh starts it to froth. Another toy is an alien visitor whose organs are yanked out by the internal organs are covered with gooey glow in the dark uh, alien blood. And another executions in your own living room, it's advertised, American Greetings Corporation Amtoy makes a plastic monster, its head blows open, its brains are exposed, there's dangling eyeballs and mossy teeth. And G.I. Joe, a new one, sells for $200 that advertises, we can kill anything known in the universe. Those are the toys for Christmas. Keep in mind the children in the daycare centers and what they're growing up to be. Now, KTVU in San Francisco had a 10-minute interview with Michael Aquino this past week. As I mentioned, they had pictures of his Waffen SS video, among other things, in his room. And uh, they this was the movie that had Sandra Gallant from the San Francisco Police Department discussing his uh, love affair with the Nazis, Nazi uniforms, Nazi flags, memorabilia in the house, and said that his mother was engaged to a Waffen SS in the 1930s. She allegedly married another man. We'll have to assume she did. And she's a millionaire and lives in San Francisco. This weekend, I saw a videotape, which I bought, called Of Pure Blood. And there's a book out by the same title, Of Pure Blood, by Clarissa Mark Hillel and Clarissa Henry McGraw-Hill. 
1976. And the videotape was on television a few years ago, and I was able to buy it last week, and it tells, and I'll do more details on it again, on creating a baby for the Fuhrer from every single family in Germany, and he went to the campus, to the educated, which reminds me of the dating service that Douglas Ginsburg was running, and I believe it was a government-related service, and uh, they made these children, and the, this Liebersborn program is the most secretive of anything that ever happened in Nazi Germany, and Heinrich Himmler got the idea in 1935, but it was well into operation by 1943 to 45 where they would have a million persons in the uh, service of Adolf Hitler by 1980. So uh, a a good guess is that people in the 40-year-old age range or 45 today, uh, they didn't all come and be born at one time. There were many houses. They kidnapped children from their parents, these missing children. They never returned to their parents. They looked for the brightest children in the occupied countries because they didn't want the brightest ones opposing them. So they took the brightest into the Hitler youth and raised them and killed the parents, the mothers and fathers, and just stole them. They were a pure blood Aryan children that they wanted in their army, so they picked them up and stole them. I'll do more on that movie. But I want to share with you what was on Geraldo Rivera's program. Oh, also in the news program on uh, the 10-minute segment, they, they said, is the Aquino case over? He hasn't been charged with the Presidio. And they said, no, there are still questions of child stealing, this NATO man, child abuse, child neglect, child molestation, and um, and they're still going into that. Well, I have about two minutes just to mention. I'll probably have to begin with it next week. Geraldo Rivero had a program on the satanic cults and a woman who had been in one for 27 years. They described the meeting, last meeting that took place was in 1981 in Mexico, and notes were available telling their plans for recruiting in the future, which began in 1982, that they would go to preschool children and get their army of the future, and they practice black witchcraft. They're criminals with criminal intent to infiltrate the schools, the, the nursery schools, the grammar schools, the high schools. And um, the uh, woman who was testifying about her experiences, Geraldo R R Rivero said, did you ever abuse children? And she said, yes, she saw her first sacrifice when a live baby was cut open and they took out the heart. And she said, they totally control you, and they mean it, and once you see it, you know it. And this program was about uh, West Point. Another person from West Point was a uh, guest on this program, and he talked about the Child Abuse Center and how he was asked to leave, that they preferred to cover it up, and how the children, little daughter was dressed as a bride and married to the devil, and then they would see dogs killed and people tortured and burnt, and they also were told there was psychic surgery where they gave them a shot and evidently put them to sleep and told them they put a monkey in their stomach. And every time they were going to tell about this, they would get a pain in their stomach so they couldn't tell. And they actually saw people burning. This was a, uh, a visit to the West Point Chapel while the parents were at the Christian church. The uh, child was left at the school, at the play school, which was run by two women of the Church of Satan. And uh, the story of the uh, pain that these children go through was told at great length on this broadcast. It was an hour broadcast, and I don't know how many of you saw it, but it was very vivid, and Geraldo Rivera was somewhat upset. He had this witness behind one of those screens and another woman who had been part of this and how they have to keep running and hiding because once they reveal it, um, they're killed, and they've been threatened to be killed. And they talked about cannibalism, eating people, adult killing, police abuse, people as policemen uh, abusing the children. So that is another part of this broadcast. As I say, next week I will do some more and then leave it off for three weeks. Not that we can't go on, but in lieu of Christmas and a new year, we'll get back to it later.